This is not a secret. Humans evolved as apex predators. And in many cases, a majority of our diet was meat. Yeah. And given the choice, you know, humans would choose to eat meat over plants, right? So humans were apex predators. We ate a lot of animals, or at least the ones that survived it. And it just, we just co-evolved with that. And so yeah. we became better at utilizing those sources of protein. So just gram per gram, it's just, it's just better for you. So um, go for the animal sources. They're just, you're, let me put it this way. You can eat less animal protein and get the same benefit as eating more plant protein. All right, let's talk about protein. Gram per gram, gram versus gram. Okay, animal protein is more effective at building muscle, at recovery, at satiety. It's more bioavailable to your body. So if you have to pick between plant protein and animal protein, choose animal protein. Okay, now in the context of getting a surplus of protein, how much does that still matter? Not that much. Yeah, I, like but I did just hair? nah. I, I just read a study though that showed that animal proteins are just utilized by human cells. Uh, much higher rates than, or at higher rates, I should say, than plant proteins. Now, what you said, Adam, is real important. If your protein intake is really high, what does that? What do I mean by really high? Like 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight, or a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Really doesn't matter if it's plant protein, animal protein. You're getting so much protein, so many amino acids, that it doesn't make that big of a difference. However, n how many people eat that much protein per day? Yeah, right. Really most, ever. most don't. Yeah, most do not. It's yeah. it's a it's a it's rare that somebody eats that much protein unless they're really focused on it. So for most people, most people who eat you know the average amount of protein every every day, you want to go for the animal stuff. It's just it's just more bioavailable and more effective for your body. Plant proteins just and all the studies when they compare them against each other just even not the effective. vegan studies. Yeah, say what? Say <laughs> even the, the vegan studies. They, they, it's true. It's yeah. it, all of them. All yeah. of them do. Yeah. And I have this conversation. You know, now I I'm bringing this up because there was a study that was posted. I belong to this to all these forums on Facebook. It's kind of a hack that I came up with like how I can learn about different subjects nerd in, groups in fast ways. That's what I call them. What are they? Nerd groups. Nerd, yeah. nerd groups. So <laughs> I go on there and I look for groups about specific. You try to be the president. Where I can argue with people online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> oh yeah, check this study out. That's the <laughs> face <laughs> I made. No, I just observed. Who's the leader of this group? <laughs> I just, <laughs> said, Let me speak to your leader. <laughs> Excuse me. I have some questions. Yeah, look at these guys. <laughs> Make fun I'm of me. Sorry. When bring I bring me your me, leader. <laughs> <laughs> You're real happy when the cameras turn off. Adam's like, "Hey Sal, I got, yeah, I got five yeah. questions." True story. True story. Yeah. I did no, send him some stuff last this night. Is where the best content comes from. So. No, but here's it. No, so I, I belong to these groups. Like you know, I belong to like technology groups and hey, uh, hey. you know groups on medicine or whatever. And so there was a, a there's a group that I belong to, and someone posted this study that showed that animal proteins are just more that human cells utilize them uh, more effectively and efficiently. And underneath it, of course, you get the vegan who's like yeah but animal sources cause this that which we can talk about those studies and they're all they're all pretty much garbage it, it, you know if you eat a healthy diet a uh, balanced diet seems to be best generally of course there's is differences that, well is it because there's there's sort of um i guess i mean there's plant toxins all these like there's a lot of things that have been um sort of brought to attention from the carnivore camps yeah uh that uh, but but really is it just about you have to break down more things to be able to get to the nutrients versus like the animal probably source is like pretty much ready to go probably. or is it because there's things that in, are inside meat that we still don't even know that are beneficial to the body right. well okay i mean the the prevailing theory and again there's a just and so the reason why i like these groups is really smart people that are in them for the whatever the subject is and so you see these debates and discussions and I mean, look, this is not uh, this is not a secret. Humans evolved as apex predators, and in many cases, a majority of our diet was meat. Yeah. And given the choice, you know, humans would choose to eat meat over plants. In but this is pre agri you know agricultural evolution, right? Before modern agriculture and grocery stores. Like if we threw people in the woods, and they had the choice of you know eating fish or elk or grabbing berries and random plants that grow, they're going to pick the, the animal, right? So humans were apex predators. We ate a lot of animals, or at least the ones that survived it, and it just we just co-evolved with that. And so yeah. we became better at utilizing those sources of protein. So just gram per gram, it's just, it's just better for you. So unless you're eating a super high-protein diet, your main protein sources, of course, if you're against eating animals and all that stuff for moral reasons, it's totally different. But if you're if it doesn't matter to you, um, go for the animal sources. They're just, you're, let me put it this way. You can eat less animal protein and get the same benefit as eating more plant protein.
That's mm-hmm. the difference. You'd have to eat more plant protein equal less animal protein. Now, if they're all high through the roof, one gram per pound of body weight, then it doesn't matter so much. But again, I don't know anybody that eats that way except for people who track and really make a, a point to do so. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? We're back from Mexico. If you're wondering why we look so tanned and relaxed, well, that's why. Anyway, here's the giveaway. MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilding-inspired workout program. It's the program Adam used to get in shape to win his pro card uh, when he used to compete in men's bikini. Excuse me, men's physique. Anyhow, I'm going to give it away for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll pick your comment and we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Now, we also have a sale going on right now. So the RGB bundle, which is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, those three very popular workout programs are bundled together. That entire bundle is 50% off. By the way, that also includes some free giveaways, Kettlebell for Aesthetics, the Sexy Athlete Mod, and the Butt Builder Blueprint. So that's all included in that, and that's also 50% off. We also have an individual MAPS program that's on sale, MAPS Suspension. This is a suspension trainer-based workout program. It's good for people who don't have any equipment or limited space or time. Build your body using just suspension trainers. That program is also 50% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the coupon code JULY50, that's JULY50 with no space, for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. What did you guys think of uh, vacationing together? I'm never doing it again. <laughs> never again. <laughs> no, it was a great Be time. stuck with you guys. So I had a lot of, you know what I enjoyed the most uh, was uh, hanging out with your guys' kids. I yeah. don't get an opportunity to really hang out with the kids. Uncle Sal time. Yeah. Yeah. I'd see them hanging out and playing. And, uh, no, it was, was cool. Yeah. There were some fun moments that Max and Aurelius were really cute, you know, hugging each other yeah, and yeah. playing. And then there was, uh, there was one, I told Justin this. So my daughter is the, she's a huge horror film fanatic. I think I've told you guys, she's a really dark sense of humor. She likes really scary shit. She's only, she's about to turn 13. She loves that stuff. Uh, Doug's out of Brie is older. She likes it too. And uh, Ethan was like, hey, I'm going to watch some scary movies, right? But he's not really into them or hasn't been. Dude, he got the trial by fire. Yeah, dude. So, <laughs> so, so first night they watch uh, The Purge. Not really a scary movie, but still kind of stressful. Actually, and so Ethan afterwards, I'm like, was it scary? What'd you think? And he's like, well, it was more stressful than scary. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Anyway, next night I walk downstairs and I'm looking. I'm like, what are you guys watching? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens, right? Oh, yeah. You're going to pro status here, yeah. huh? So I go in the kitchen, and I'm making some popcorn because I planned on sitting with them. Anyway, I got caught up in a discussion with Jessica. So we're in the kitchen for like 25 minutes, right? So 25 minutes later, the kids walk in the kitchen. I'm like, oh, what happened? You guys not watching the movie? And Ethan goes, um, as soon as he ripped the old lady's face off and put it on like a mask, I knew <laughs> I knew that I probably shouldn't watch this movie. It's in over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. Bro. There's another level of scary. I was dying of laughter. Well, yeah, there's levels, buddy. Yeah. yeah. You've but heard me you've heard me actually talk about what my buddies used to do because they I was the one who doesn't like scary movies. So that is actually one of the last mem- so I don't remember what year that it's the newer Chainsaw yeah, Massacre, yeah, right? Yeah. So that when the newer one came out, which is still a long time ago, it's yeah. still an old movie. Yeah. Um I think we were in high school, maybe maybe junior was college. The one with Jessica Beale. The- oh. Maybe, could you check the date on it? To, to, if it's the one I'm thinking of, that when it came out, I think I described to you, right? They're on, they're on, like they're on some country road. Yeah, yeah, you get, yeah. yeah right. At the very, that's how it starts. Yeah. It opens mm-hmm. up. With it's that. just gratuitous. Just oh, but that was shit. that was the last like yes, movie disturbing. I recall when I tell you guys my buddies used to do that to me, where they were like, "Let's make Adam watch this," you know. And you're calling. I'm like, hey, we're in high school. I think at that time, so we'll see when the date comes up. If that's what. <laughs> what the, which movie is it? Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw Massacre. Massacre. Oh, the, the original is 1974. No, no but there not was the original. original. There's one, the okay. one of the 90s. There was one of the 90s, late, yeah. mid to late 90s. I want to say 99, I think. I, that's a good guess, yeah. which would put mm-hmm. me as a senior in high school. 2003 is when it looks. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, okay, so you were in college. Yeah, you're a little older. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely can't back. So you're, you're a grown man. Hey, but anyway. So I can't, I can't, I can't back man. down to my buddies yeah. calling me out that I can't watch it, right? So that's where we're at. We're at a situation. That was the last one that I remember that doing that where they would they would make me watch it just so they could watch my reactions and that was it after that oh like, yeah i'm done yeah dude. i'm done that's it i'm not gonna let anybody bully me into watching these things anymore it's miserable <laughs> yeah. 
Was it really 2003? So yeah, yeah, I'm, 2003. I'm like uh, 19, 19, 20 at that point, something like that. What? Yeah, yeah. I think the last one I, I graduated was in high school at 17 years old in '99. So. Oh, okay. So okay. that would be right. That so you're math? 18, 19, fuzzy or 20. Math. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. But it was just funny because he was self aware enough to say it. So yeah, when he, as soon as he ripped her face off, that's what I knew. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't have like super nightmares. Well, because Everett, he always wants to do whatever his brother's doing. Yeah, and, all that. and so he, I think he actually started upstairs with them, and then. I was like, buddy, like, I just don't feel like we're ready right now, you know, to <laughs> yeah. go to that level. Like, and so I had to like figure something out. And so we actually just introduced him to Stranger Things because it was like sort of, I thought it was just an introduction enough into yeah. kind of scarier, eerie stuff. And so we actually started all the way back from the beginning, which is cool. But now I'm like, I was just on the new season, like two episodes in, and now I got to go all the way back. And like, <laughs> dude, we're only on like, you know, season two, almost finishing that up. And yeah. I'm like, well, Man. plus Stranger Things got more horror as it went along. Like in yeah. the beginning, it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was like a slow scary. drip. The last season got, was pretty gnarly. Mm, I just yeah. finished watching it. It's pretty, it's like, it <sighs> harkens back to like the 1980s kind of horror I movies. love it so much. It's all set in the 80s. It's so much nostalgia and like I rewatching a lot of the old episodes too. You're like, "Oh yeah, dude, they did such a good job." Yeah, they well, did. Well, going back to our vacation, I was most impressed with the fact that we pretty much live with each other here already and work with each other 24/7 yeah. and then we're able to like, you know, I mean, and we were in a house where we weren't leaving. I mean, we pretty yeah. much were all there together 24/7 for a week and Nobody got into it. Nobody we just crashed like, each other. Yeah. Why would we get into it? Yeah. Oh, that's We're all it. grown. Come on. People that spouses that live with each other and see each other every day and get into it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, and they're married to each other and love each other. We're just fact, professionals at avoiding each other. Yeah. You know, I, I thought really that we did to. a really good job of like, I mean, we shut down. That was the most shut down I have personally been in a really, really long time. Yeah. Like oh, I yeah. normally it takes me about 48 hours to like decompress and like I'm technically in vacation. I was in vacation mode within the first 45 yes. minutes. Dude had Almost me a pina colada sitting out by the pool. I was Dude, like, we were, oh, we yeah, were drinking I'm, Coronas I'm in the in the car. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I was even before yeah. that. Yeah, how, right. How does the rules work over there? That's what I understand. So you get in the car. Apparently that's okay. The dude picks you up, <laughs> and he's got a cooler with beer. Yeah. And yeah. he throws beers in the back. Here you go, guys. I'm like, what? It's great tradition. Have, I don't know hey, if you that. Yeah, there's different rules in Mexico. The pharmacy in Mexico. This was great. I went to like five different pharmacies because I cannot believe the shit that you could buy over the counter in Mexico. Yeah. You can buy anything. Yeah. Anything over the counter. Advertised. Pretty much. You want muscle relaxant? You want uh, painkillers? You want opiates? You want? Th I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, it's all over the counter. I mean, that has to be big business for them because it's on uh, almost every corner. Well, I'm sure, Americans you see, go you down see, there and buy Oh yeah, you shit. see, you see a, a pharmacia, and then you see one two stores down, another one. It's like, god damn, that's super competitive. Did you guys have the? <laughs> there was this one lady on the street trying to sell stuff. And she was like, "You want bigger boners?" <laughs> wow! I'm like, "Whoa, lady, I got kids. Like, <laughs> like you need to change your approach." Yeah. But hey, meet me over there. Real but quick. also, <laughs> yes. your wife's like, "Here's twenty dollars. You What's that gonna get me?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, around the corner. Yeah. Hey, come here. Yeah. Yes, give me the boner pill for my. So you no, guys I got dark, and I just kind of got more freckly. Yeah, you did all you, right. No, you, you got actually did all right. You got I'm color. Surprised. Yeah. I actually, gotta, I pushed the limits because I was trying, trying to compete with me. Like, was, you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was focused on Bree, to be honest with you. I was actually, I was actually, I was trying to catch, catch Bree is where I was really you going. You set your limits. Yeah, yeah, I did. I was like, I wasn't even thinking about you. I was thinking about, I'm going to get Bree. Yeah. And then she went out there and read her book out on the beach one day and it was like, that was toast. It's like, I'm not catching her now for sure. Yeah. But I actually, uh, I, so I now as a kid, which I think you are, are, I think you're still like this. Do you not have to use sunscreen at all? I do for the first day or two if I stay out. Okay, so after what, that I don't have to. So when I was a kid, I didn't none. Like none. It could be out in the sun all day long and I just got darker, 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 darker. I never got sunburned yeah. or anything. As I got into my twenties, another weird thing that changed for me was I could get sunburned or I would actually get these like I get these like uh sun blotches or like rash almost like rashes. So I don't really get like a red. Do you burn. think it's just because you're not in the sun a lot anymore? And when you yeah, were a kid, you always totally. were. So totally. I think my body, because then I go under these fluorescent lights working in the gym industry. Yeah. And then I go back thinking I can still handle the sun the way I did. And then my body goes, no, you can't. So anyways, I, I have to now uh, wear suntan lotion. and But I was still like pushing the limits on how long I was out there for. And by about day four or so, that's why you saw the last day I was like in the shade because I was like, God damn it. Yeah. Like I went too hard. And it got all rashy. But you know what I used? And I don't know if I'm supposed to or not, but I used, uh, I had my Caldera with me. 
And so I rubbed that on there, and it sure as shit felt and looked better the next day. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if there's anything anything in there. Oh, really? Yeah, anti-inflammatory, and it's uh, it's got um, compounds in there that help with damage, with skin, skin damage. So in the studies they did with Caldera, you see re reduction in fine lines, sunspots, healthier skin because of that. Yeah, so Katrina thought sense. I was crazy because I come out and I was all all oiled up. She's You're like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, how's that going to help your <laughs> sun tracks all the I'm sun. like, no, no. I said, I'm not. It's the yeah. Caldera. I try to put it down, I, and it did. I mean, I definitely I felt how dry my skin was too, and I felt like it yeah. soaked it all up. I was real dry. Yeah, I was like actually putting it on my heels because they're like all cracked at that point. And I was like, ow, my like it hurts to walk. Like, what's mm. happening? You know, it's, of course I just never even consider I have dry skin. Yeah. I'll tell you the one thing that I'm glad I skipped out on was the fishing trip that you guys. Oh, oh, man. You I knew that shit would happen. That one, oh, maybe that's why. Maybe you jinxed yeah, that, dude. dude. You know, what? How that, the hell are you going to blame it on me? That is the first fishing trip that I've done. Like a, like one of the, like what you pay for, right? So I've done fishing trips before where I caught no fish. But if, if one of those where you take you out on the boat, like I've done that quite a few times now. And every time it's been like super successful. And we always come back with a bunch of fish. So the, the theory, okay, the idea in my head was actually like trying to save us money. It's like, you know, mm. and be fun, right? Take the boys out fishing. Everyone gets to experience it together. And then we catch all this fish. And then we we're going to have somebody prepare it for us all week. And so we wouldn't have to spend so much on groceries. Like, yeah. That was the thought. No, dude, I get a text from my son because he went with you guys. And yep. he's like, I'm like, hey, how are you doing out there? He's like, I'm laying down. I'm so seasick. I'm like, oh, crap. Because yeah. it was choppy. It was horrible. The whole, the Doug, whole, the Doug, whole you, boat? You, Doug, you puked a bunch, right? Yeah, three times. Wow. And not just one time. I'm like three or four times each time I just power vomit. So you did three sets of like 10 reps. Yeah, basically. exactly. <laughs> basically. <laughs> power vomiting. It was like over the side of the boat, dude. Oh, yeah, well, man. I just put my head over. It's the worst. If rip. you've ever had seasickness, it's the worst because it's so exhausting. Because oh, all your senses are fighting or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like so, you don't recover. No, you're ruined for like a day or two. I've been ruined for two days before from extreme uh, motion sickness. Well, you're super sensitive to this. Yeah, you can't even right, sit in the yeah. backseat of a car like a little kid. Yeah. I'm going to sit in the front. I need to see the window. Yeah. yeah. Dude, well, this is why like fishermen are so like superstitious. You know, like yeah. Yeah, anything goes wrong, all of a sudden they'll just like look around and what's so, the blame? Well, I knew it was a bad, it was a, I knew it was a bad idea when we got to the place and the guy tells me that the last three days, no boats had we, we should have listened to that guy yeah. but it was already too late they already yeah. had our money at that point ah, that's true so, so what, what 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 are the kinds of fish you could catch out there el dorado which is basically mahi mahi same okay. thing they call it el dorado there it's it was uh striped marlin and i forget what other type of marlin season so that would be that's wait the, like a re, like a yeah. legit marlin yeah, yeah. Big old like one trophy fish. fish yeah that's why it was so exciting was i oh, mean no, we we're hoping for that june and july are prime months for uh the marlin out there which every time I've gone, I've gone towards the winter time, mm -hmm. and in the winter time, that's when El Dorado is like everyone's catching El Dorado like crazy. But that's the better tasting fish. So, but the the trophy fish would have been the yeah. would have been the more. Well, I'll tell you the best meal I had out there was the last day. The last day we were there, so you guys weren't there, right? So we went downtown because we had to check out, and we had some time before we went to the airport. And the driver, we asked him, "What's a good taco place?" And he gives us the name. I can't remember the name of the place. He gives us the name of some place. So we said, okay, we're going to eat there for lunch. So we're hanging out, and then it was time to go eat lunch. So we're walking to find it, and it's a it's a hole-in-the-wall yeah. taco place. Taco like, Goose. It was, okay, it's like a little- G-U-S-S. Yeah, like cash only or whatever. Yeah. No AC. Like There's a fan blowing. I mean, blowing. the place was like a dirt hole. Yeah, yeah and we're smoking. It's, it's hot and everything. And I'm like, oh, man. And of course, the kids are like, oh, I want air conditioning. No, whatever. Dude, the tacos were fire. Yeah, mm. he brought those things out, and I was like, "This is the best tacos I've." I ever wish seen. I remembered all. The, I know Courtney made a made at least written, wrote down one right of the yeah. Ones we have that, a couple. That, Tom actually researched all the before the last time that we went. Mm. All of us went to Cabo, um, re, like all the hole in the wall places, and we like went round every day. We went to one or two of mm -hmm. them. And uh, they were all fire. I know she brought us back to one of the ones. Yeah, but we went to one of them. There were a couple, and I don't know if it was the one we. I don't think it was the one we went to. That was one of my favorites that Tom took us to. But I wonder if it's one of the same ones because so it was good. a. It was definitely a shithole. Yeah, <laughs> oh. the, they all were. The best ones were the ones that looked like. Oh it's, my god! By the way, it's, I know. by the way, it's like that here in San Jose too. Yeah, the best taco true. places in San Jose that's are true. the ones that look like it's East Side, East Side San Jose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, I, the be, some of the best. 
I've had tacos out of someone's trunk out of their car. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am not joking. Too authentic. It was yeah, so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. bro. Like, That's what like put... the word you just use. Yeah. 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 All these authentic. are real. Authentic. Yeah. If they came out of the trunk. You know, you know, I, you know what made me think about uh, us and like st still being able to get no one actually fighting. There was no there was no riffs at all. It was really a, an incredible vacation. So that when I came back, I watched the... Um, all in podcast is back to their their regular recording of the four. I don't know if you watched or not, but there was a bunch of controversy. Yeah, one of the that was a J Cal wanted more a greater percentage of the podcast. Of the podcast, yeah. yeah. So they're debating back and forth, and, <laughs> and they, I did, just, they debated it on. And the I podcast. just I well, find no, it, it I was, find I find it really interesting. They're all multi. I mean, you have a hundred millionaire. You have someone who's worth like five hundred million. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that seems. A I think J Cal is like the the tightest, and he's still worth tens yeah. of millions of dollars. He's, they're all worth. A lot of money, yeah. Yeah, and they're squabbling trivial. over like literally percent percent. Of but here's the learning. Here's the learning part. That that's true. But they're all shrewd business people. But they all they all got along and they did it and they dropped it. Yeah. See, a lot of people will get that, let that get in the way, and yeah. then you know, screw you. I'm not going to be. You know, it's whatever. also early and it's very small in the business too. Yeah. The fact that that has happened already is crazy to me. I know. I it just it highlights again. I think that we what we talked about. I was just talking. My uncle and aunt came and visited me this weekend. And he was asking all kinds. Of, I haven't seen them in a long time. And he was getting all caught up on the business. And the number one thing that my family or friends or people that I tell the story about how this all started and everything like that is the, the, the four owner thing. Everybody yeah. always trips out about that. Wait, 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 there's four, you guys are equal, they're yeah. all equal. And what are the positions and how does that work? Yep. And like, and you guys you haven't, you haven't fought over all this money. And, done, and it's like, no, it's, it hasn't been that way. Everybody is. Well, who? I mean, there's got to be somebody who does more of the work, or no? This mm -hmm. like that's what everybody ha like comes down yeah. to. Which, to me, that's what that highlight. It's like no doubt that J. Cal in that situation in All In, like he organizes the podcast, he organizes Summit, so rightfully so, he probably. But I, I, th I think back to all the the you know the the ups and downs and things that we've done over the last seven eight years, and I, I think there's a time at at every point in this business where somebody can make the case that they're doing more work than everybody else. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. it's there's a time there's a time when Sal 100 percent was buried in his book writing for eight hours eight hours a day or researching something that with well, the rest of us were at home probably not doing anything. Or there's definitely been plenty of times where Doug is up till two in the morning trying to get accounting stuff together. The whole time. So that yeah, right, right. <laughs> there's definitely been times when I mean Justin just went through a hell of a shit show the last month and a half of all the push that we did with all the programming and launches that we did and revamping and doing more video shoots like you know so there's times where everybody i think feels like they probably i've, I've watched enough love those you know, like true hollywood stories to know not to <laughs> let ego yeah. like how many bands have been destroyed because oh, lead singer's head gets too big or everybody gets almost jealous all or, of them yeah, or I mean, yeah or their their lead singer just like you know uh, takes too many drugs and then yeah. it's over. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. don't take that many drugs. I was impressed though that I, I would, to your point about them still being able to like, ah, uh, we all love each yeah. other and still move forward because uh, uh, Jason Calcanis was making the point that, I mean, I couldn't mean, imagine if I was actually telling one of you that you're replaceable. Yeah, he was saying that. What was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because they had, they had, a, so check this out, okay? And remember when we did this, remember we had times where we, we subbed out uh, and only two guys did the yeah. show way, way back yeah, when? Yeah. He was he was using the numbers on hey when we had so and so on the show and you weren't here our numbers were up so he was like <laughs> literally making the dude feel wow. re replaceable That's like stuff we'll joke about like, yeah he's like being serious yeah that huh? would be a funny yeah. jab but yeah, he was right. like serious about it wow uh, so know, it's a, it's amazing that didn't cause more division oh dude so I got to tell this story That's right funny. so this is funny so um, when we're there there's there were also people in the house that were you know working on working in the house right so either cleaners or people preparing food and stuff and. One of the guys there, Alan is his name, so give him a shout out. Real nice guy. Yeah, he was he's awesome. Like, yeah, he's like, what do you guys do? You know, and he spoke English pretty well. And I said, oh, we, we you know, we we have a fitness podcast and we work in health and whatever. And so he's asking me questions and he's like, you know, me and my friend have a debate. Is is green juice healthy or not? So we got this whole discussion about whether or not green juice is healthy. And I was uh, telling him, you know, I told him about Organifi, obviously, because we work with them. And I said, you know, it's if you don't eat enough vegetables, then it's then it's fine. It's good. If you do eat enough vegetables, vegetables, you know, whole foods always the best. It's always better than supplements. But if you miss them, like a lot of people, then the green juice powder, like the one from Organifi, is going to be really good. So we got into that conversation. So that was day one, right? Anyway, like two days later, he comes up to me and he goes, "Sal, you want to know what's crazy?" I said, "What?" 
and he plays a video of me. Yeah. And so it's that, okay, so it's that clip, that one clip, that same clip that keeps going. The man by. who loves the journey one, right? That I'm so now I'm so sick of seeing because it's been shared. With. <laughs> yeah, and I know it's but in the one that Jessica, made, my wife, she's like, of all the things you say, that's the dumbest one. That's the one that's getting shared. I'm like, what do you mean it's the dumbest one? Like, anyway, so he's showing me the clip, and he goes, Most "Mainstream." He goes, "My friend sent this to me and said you need to listen to this. It's super motivating." Not knowing that he was working with us, yeah, in the yeah. House or whatever. That he was in like, the house with us. So he's showing, and it's my, it's, it's I'm. I'm speaking, but it's subtitled in Spanish. So apparently there's clips out there of shit that we're uh, saying. Oh, it's hilarious. Subtitled in Spanish. The best was, which was is super the cool. joke. Remember the joke of the week? The joke of the week after that was that we're gonna be walking out in Cabo and someone's gonna be like, Oh man, without the journey, man, man without the, man journey. the journey. Can you sign my yeah. shirt? <laughs> well, run right past Justin and yeah. I. Yeah, yeah. Man, journeyman, journeyman, journeyman. No, hey, can you dude. take a picture of me and man with journey? Yeah. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, but, no problem, dude. But oh. you know, it did make me think, you know, that that market is uh really um, a really valuable market. And they're like five years behind. Yeah. You to- remember when we did, when we Ooh. first started, we did uh, that one girl's radio show. Yeah. I, I can't remember her name or the radio station. We went, it was yeah. LA, it was, right? It was, it was LA. Yeah. Was it at te- was it te- was it part of it's Telemundo's? Part of, not yeah. Telemundo yeah. was it? It was uh, Univision. 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 Yeah, yeah, it was yeah Univision. There you go. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, she was saying that she was saying how desperate. Well, that obesity they- in Latin America has exploded. Okay, yeah. is exploded. Mexico in particular. Yeah, they need a lot of help. Yeah. And they're very interested in health and fitness. Yeah. And a lot of the information they're getting is like ten years behind. Yep. So I mean, I think it would be smart for us to have something that maybe the clips, like so we have a, a mind pump a clips channel. A lot of people don't know this on YouTube. Oh, how you brought that up because like, short you- clips of us saying things. I think it would be smart to have some of those, you know, in the subtitles so people yeah, can totally. access them. But back well. to the the green juice, I could see the skepticism though, because any podcast you listen to, they have like some kind of green juice attached there's lots of like you know brands out there i'm not gonna throw too much yeah. shade but there's not a whole lot of high high quality versions of it out there so there you got to be kind of uh careful with what you're out there buying just like any totally. other supplement totally. yeah how many people just like mow some grass and then throw it yeah. <laughs> i mean with like supplement dude. business you can get yeah. away with so much yeah. stuff or, you know? yeah, green high c <laughs> so what were you gonna say about the pl- clips uh no i'm just glad you brought it up because we've had so many people that oh, yeah. thought well, there's people that think that we got rid of it right because we yeah. used to put the clips on the same channel as the podcast channel and then people thought that we just stopped doing that. And there's a lot, I actually know a lot of people that don't listen to the whole show yeah. and they actually like it in the little They're stuff. easy to share and yeah. stuff too. So it's Mind Pump Clips, yeah. I think is the name of the On channel. YouTube. So I, YouTube. I do have something that I, I want to ask you guys that came up. So today we have um, live callers and we had this, uh, this girl that's uh, working for a high school that gets like these kid recruited kids ready for D1. And, uh, Justin and I were both like, man, that would be so cool. I, I would oh, love yeah. our kids to go to that school or whatever like that. And got me to thinking a uh, question that I wanted to ask you guys, because I know we also have a mutual friend who I believe did do this with their, with their kids, or he did it, one or the other, can't remember. Um, would you guys consider sending your kids off for high school to another state to like a school like that? High school? Yes. High no. School? No, I wouldn't. Mm. I, I I wouldn't do the one of those boarding schools. I have a friend that that's doing that. Yeah, Sending, oh, same guy probably. Yeah, that's I sends think his kid off to boarding yes, school. Yes. No, I don't. You know why? Because now they're not just teaching your kid; they're raising your. So kid. you you have a snap judgment no to that. I don't have a snap no to that. Yeah, I know. It have to it'd depend for me. Like the, I guess like them approaching me with the idea. Obviously, if, if if like one of my kids was like really motivated to do that, and like I saw a lot of like talent potential in that direction, and like. They're arguing with me a, a good case for it. And like you saw the track record of all the students that then resulted in like the. <laughs> it sounds like no way. Dude. Yeah. Like obviously it would kill me inside to be away from my kid, dude. Don't me get too. Me wrong. Me it would too. Kill it's not me. just that, but those are formidable years. You're talking about 13, 14 and up. No, you're talking about no you're, high school. Yeah, high school. So how old are you when you're freshman? Yeah, 15. 14, 15, 15. Okay, yeah. so 15. 15 to 18. You're yeah. asking those people not just to teach your kid, but to raise your kid. Now yeah. they're raising Partially, your kid too. I mean, okay, okay, the argument with that, so I'm going to challenge that. Okay, play devil's so if they kid. come back they're, for the summer, I mean, that doesn't play any factor okay, for Okay, two you. months out of the okay. year. Well, I mean, I mean hey, here's yeah. the deal. Like, your kid's high school is raising your kid right now anyways. Not the same. I, I mean, still see my, my kids still sure, come home every day. Yeah, but school. let's be honest with yourself. How many days out of the week do you actually sit down and then break down what he learned today and then challenge it or agree with it's their It's not work? just that. It's about being around, yeah. bringing around your house. I'm with Justin. So I, I knew this would create a good discussion between yeah. us because we wouldn't all see eye to eye on it because 
I am with you. If my, let's say, I, and it would, this would matter, right? It wouldn't. I would never just send my kid to a boarding school. No, I would. Yeah, I'm like not that. trying to. But if I had, a, if I had, a, if I had a son or a daughter, you send him to Xavier School for the Gifted. The, <laughs> exactly. I, I would send him Develop to X Men. I would send him to X Men School. Yeah. Hell well, yeah. yeah. If yes. my kid was a mutant, I would yes. do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't handle this. You keep setting the house on fire. No, yeah. if, go to this school. If my if my Control son or daughter powers. exhibited uh, real talent, whether that be in music or that be in sports or something like that and there was a school like the one we were talking to with this girl that had an extremely like strong program and they have a great pathway for them to potentially become pros bro i don't trust anybody when my kids 24 hours a day except for people i, I really I, really fucking scared know. well of course it's my kids yeah. i mean look okay yeah but you okay to that point dude it just because they're in the same town as you doesn't make that any more or less scary. Yes, it does. Not scary. Just they're they're with me. I can keep my finger on the pulse. I can see what's going on. Be a better helicopter dad. You take yeah. I mean, look, it didn't have to be about helicopter. <laughs> it's it's that they're there. You can watch them. Look, you're gonna send your kid off. Fine, they're talented. Let's say they want to play uh, music and they want to be you know a classically trained pianist. So they go to this gifted musical school and they're out of the state. They're somewhere else. Um, you, you're not there all the time to keep your finger on. Maybe the pressure's too high. Maybe they're trying to impress you and they, you know, it's, how are you going to know? How are you going to know what's going on? Hey, son, well, you how mean, you doing? Well, you, you, can, you, you can Zoom, Zoom call him every day yeah. for an hour. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I honestly would, it would, it's a completely individual thing. Like if, if I saw a lot of like real potential and like they were in a setting where it's going to foster the growth of their success, like I would feel like I was robbing them of that Dude, opportunity. If he, I, how hard, they could still get bro, that opportunity. Imagine, imagine how hard it would be to say It'd no if they tough. really wanted to do that. Like I definitely wouldn't send my kid off because I think this is a better education or and that's like that's me in, imposing my thing on them. But if my son or daughter, went, we went there and we toured this one, he's like, dad, I... Yeah. I will. Can I come here? I and he really wanted well, to go there, and it was all those great things. I'd have a really hard time telling. I him would no. convince you guys not to. No way I'd let you guys do that. To your <laughs> it's, kids. it's a Doug, tough where one because like, where are you at, Doug? I'm when, pretty torn on this one. When do you but. when do you let the the youngling fly out from the nest? Of course, the non-athletic. Like oh, I think, right? I like, think well, what's the age? I think college is appropriate. Good. No, okay. I think college is good. I think you know that those young mid-teen ages, those mid-teen and up. Come on, man. It, who knows? Like you don't know what's going on yeah. over there. You don't know the. I people. feel that way with junior high, a hundred percent. There's got to be high school. I'm a little more like you don't know the kids they're with, who they're sleeping with. Come on, well, you, you still, would. You don't you'd know go to the school. You come on. Well, come you, on. You know more. Again, you'd have to you'd have to vet it out, like definitely, right? And you'd have to like see the track record. You meet all the teachers. Like you do your homework. You're not just sending them off. Bro, to Kyle, you let him go or you people. don't let him go. You let him go or don't let him go. Yeah, so he agrees with me. <laughs> That's what you got out of that? Yeah. So, you know, idea. You're on my team, dude. Yeah, yeah. He knows. You're my team. He knows. Look, no, have, I, you see, have you seen these? Find me one kid that's fucking normal that at 15 years old goes and goes hardcore in some kind of sport or endeavor. Yeah, they become a, a star, maybe track athlete or amazing golfer, but they're all messed up, dude. Look at look at child celebrities, like with all yeah, that a, talent. That's a big generalization. Well, okay, yeah, find me some that, that, that yeah. turned out freaking amazing. Like I mean, that turned out normal could, and balanced. We don't have it in front of us. Look, so look, what's his name? Tiger Woods, greatest golfer of all time. He was well, like, he got, since yeah. he was a kid, come on. You know? But that's different. That was them hammering him and not giving him any yeah. social. That's what you're asking yeah. for. No, you're lumping a lot of things into that's, one that's, conversation here. That's, that's not, a different not conversation. the same thing. Like that's a dad who was obsessive from the kid being three years old all the way on. What do you think's gonna happen when you send your kid to a, a school like that? They're obsessive. Yeah, he's asking he, the, the, for exactly it. the kids like that's, pulling. That, that would be that that would, year olds ask for all kinds of crazy shit. You don't mean you say yes. Well, you're right. You're right. Sure. And there's a lot of things I'd probably say no to. But that is a, a situation where it could potentially better him and move him forward in a pursuit that he IFC passion in him about. Yeah. And I want to help foster that. I'd find that. one close by is what I would do. And and and, and honestly, like, well, I mean. If, if that worked out. I mean, yeah, if so. there was that perfect situation. But, I mean, even that girl with that school, like, I don't know any schools, any yeah. any high schools that are doing that for the basketball players right now. And that have that kind of record where they're How much kids. you want to bet? How much? Well, I don't want to say. I bet you a lot of the kids that go to the that I bet you there's a good percentage of kids that go to these schools that get recruited for sports, where it is a it is a clearly better option because maybe they're growing up in they're underprivileged. Maybe it's a single parent. They get recognized because they play really good sports. Sure. And mom is yeah. like, I can barely afford to support you. I'm working by myself. You go to this, this school with all these these kids that are not doing so great. Yes, I'll send you over there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you got, like, you're, you know, my kids have a great house. We have good, you know, environment, good family. Everybody's taken care of or whatever. Good. 
Like, what's the benefit? I, I don't see a huge benefit to going somewhere like now. If I was struggling and I'm like, oh my god, I, I come I, on, you know that. I mean, that's it's that's like comparing the you know why you have your kid in a private school versus having your kid in a public school. Yeah, right? but I'm yeah. not sending him away. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, it's, I it's, it's, it's but yeah, to, it's to the point of the argument you're making right there. I don't see the benefit. Yes, you do. You see the benefit of putting him in, in an organized school where the relationships that he's going to make is going to benefit potentially his future. Yes, the same thing would but apply. But I don't think it's worth it. network that they're going to establish. You know, the rest of their life. I just don't think it's worth it. What though. do you think, Doug? Uh, you're torn but i want to i want to hear what you think yeah so uh, you know i feel like obviously if you really want to improve their career prospects having them go away is the ideal thing however from the standpoint of development relationships and modeling you know uh behavior such as a parent can provide uh i i feel definitely having them close by is best for example brianna and i a while back i was really immersed in my work all the time and I wasn't really giving her the attention I needed. And I could see our relationship slipping apart. And she was kind of falling into the wrong crowds and, and doing some things I didn't think was a great you know, idea. And then um, I really started to, to dedicate my time to spending time with her. And then on the weekends, we'd go do something. We'd spend time together. And that's made a world of difference. Yeah. And uh, our relationship is a lot better. But... It's also spilled over to other parts of her life. She's made better choices with friends and things like that. So uh, I've seen kids go off to boarding school and just become total wild. Yeah, and and also, I'm, not, I'm not a boarding school. And also take his perspective. Well, they're all boarding take, schools. If take, they're take, sleeping there, it's a boarding take, school. Take, yeah, but you mean sending them off to like a boarding school as a parent versus them choosing to go to the school because they want to pursue a specific sport or talent, right? You know so what the different. problem is? is and also we, remember where he's coming from right now is that like, you noticed behaviors that you didn't like in her. You recognize things that you weren't doing as a parent. Therefore, it was something that you... I'm talking about a kid who is so passionate about his, this sport, yeah. and I'm so proud of him as a father that he's into this, and he him and I are touring schools, and this school offers this opportunity, and it's going to break my heart to let my son, which is my firstborn son, go over there, and I'm out without him for four years at this school. It would tear me up every night. Every night it yeah. would tear me up. But if he wanted it that bad, and he is showing me that he he's that serious about this, yeah. I, I would have to You know what the it. problem is, is that a lot of people yep. value, they think that success Success in sports or business or money is happiness and is everything. It's not. I'd rather have a kid be bro. You're middle class. You're, 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 that argument happy, falls though. flat on its yeah, face it's, by what I just said. He's passionate about this. Is his passion? He lives and breathes basketball. It's what all he thinks he, about. He, might he not, sleeps with his basketball. But he doesn't know what he's losing by not being with his family and by being. In he's that gonna have his whole life to be with his family. I mean, there's you no. Could, that's after that. It's a lot harder. After that, then it's. I don't. Different. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sure, it doesn't get any easier yeah. or whatever like that. Yeah. But I mean, that's a, to say that I'll for throw a fit if you send your kids somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. No, yeah, I, I knew this. Would Max call. stays here. You know, when, when we were doing the when we were doing the live, I'm claw, like, this is a highly unlikely scenario, but I'm going to keep going. With yeah, it. well, yeah. I mean, when we were doing the live qua and the girls talking about school, I could see both Justin and I. I, I could got, see. I'm like, woo! This both awesome. Justin and I could see our eyes going, man, that'd be so cool. Well, okay, my kid so that's cool. I would have loved this personally for me. Like, uh, like me too. I, I would have loved it, and I would have taken advantage of it. 100%, me too, and I would not have regretted it. And let me tell you, my relationship with later, my parents would probably would be earlier. tighter today than exactly. it is today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but that's different. Though. But, but, but yeah, yeah, what do you mean? That's a, yes. You're right. It's different. You don't like living at home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so neither. So I hated it. Like, yeah. I wanted to get out. Yeah, so yeah, my, yeah, I should have done it a long time ago. So I mean, and that, and so that's a good point. Okay, and that that's a very good point, right? Justin and I didn't like at home. We would have loved that. That would have actually kids love us at home. Right. So it's a different scenario. So will be a different scenario and so it would be a very hard right i hope that i provide a home for my son that it would be very challenging yeah. for him to even want that right sure. like i could never see your your kid wanting that yeah yeah i think your kids want to be home they want to be near you that bad that i don't think he would come to you in fact you're going through that process right now touring colleges i wouldn't be surprised if your kid makes a decision he's smart enough to get into almost anywhere in he's the probably country pick a closer one, he will dude. pick something yep. i think that is closer because he doesn't want to be too far from his dad we'll see i mean he's older too though right he's he's out of that age you know we're talking 15 16 like he'll yep. be 18 19 there's a big difference there's a big difference between 18 19 19 year old and a 15 year old sure yeah you know that's huge i mean you put me i mean i don't know i i, I guess look and let me tell you i'm like way i'm way more progressive than the way i grew up in my family you don't move out until you're married i don't care if you're 40 you live with yes, your parents <laughs> <laughs> you think i'm joking no i know no, it's, it's a culture, it's with a their culture parents, thing which right? hits is why you're so that way yeah bro. exactly <laughs> Dude. Yeah, my, my parents are 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See you later. Yeah. Speaking of which, right? So I I go to my my grandparents went over to my parents' house last night, and I went over there real quick to go visit with them and. You know, we haven't had Vicky here in a little while. She does our beards and everything. So my beard was all big and bushy. Oh, yeah, or whatever. I was supposed to bring up your mustache. Uh, oh, well, sorry. I got the story. It's okay. Yeah, so, okay right. so I walk in and my grandfather right away gives me shit because my beard was all scraggly. Your grandfather oh, yeah. was? You, you know, <laughs> he goes, you, go, Salvatore, you know, I love you, right? And I know he's going to say some shit. So yeah, I know that. No, no. And he goes, but uh, you look terrible. You need to cut your beard. It's too long. My grandma's like, you look old. So I said, okay. So I went home because we're going to go back for dinner. Yeah. So I went home and I trimmed everything except for the mustache. Cause I thought, oh, this. I, I told Jessica, I said, watch my grandfather. Yeah, I'm gonna watch come in looking like Lu Lu Luigi and see yeah. if my grandpa likes <laughs> hey, it. Hey, watch him. It's a Mario. Hey, hey. Why, hey I thought, hey, I thought for sure my grandfather would would think it was like throw a fit, you know? Yeah. So I'm no. like, this is gonna be funny. No. So I walk in and my grandparents are like, oh my god, it's a beautiful. I love it. it. Looks so good. Give me all this compliment. Now I'm confused. So now I'm confused. <laughs> no, bro, you look like Luigi. Now That's why, bro. You no, he looks like a musketeer. He's got the little patch <laughs> on <out of> here. <laughs> and then like, Jessica, yeah. she said, "Is handsome-ish." That's what she said. So, <laughs> so I said, "All right." Yeah, I'm, I'm the Count of Monte Cristo. I'll I mean, keep it I, for a I second. think your, your mustache has the most dark hair still. I see. That's the. That's why I kept it. <laughs> Everything <laughs> else like, is white. Yeah, bro. This is all white. You still got some dark hair. I got like going. three or four whites <laughs> going on there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. maybe we should go the full like mustachio group here. Uh, uh, remember I was when, actually considering. Remember it. when Adam grew his? Yeah, uh, I rocked mine for a while. Uh, hammer one. Yeah, I look yeah. so bad though. I look so bad. You looked awesome. We talked. Yeah. I feel like I need. See, I wasn't in great shape. I need to be in like great shape and then have that you need to have kind of like if you're gonna have like you're in great shape right now so you could do like stupid shit with your face yeah <laughs> when you do stupid shit with your yeah. face and you're not in good shape it just doesn't look i good. feel yeah, like your body makes it looks up like you don't it. yeah <laughs> exactly it looks like you don't care but obviously you care yeah right yeah. you see you see well, i care all over every, you every once in a while funny like facial hair looks like can kind of look cool like it's <laughs> it a bartender luigi, yeah. yeah that's yeah, luigi yeah. right there why yeah. you gotta give me luigi not mario i know it's taller, you look like luigi at that thing why are shorter and fatter so i think that's so you should be happy. Most racist cartoon of all time, I swear to God. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Mario uh, Brothers. Yeah. Anyway, I got confused. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it looks good. Maybe Lucky it does So I think I'm going to we'll let We'll let the audience yeah. decide. Hey, I got a study I want to bring up with you guys. Kind of cool. So, Adam, you know how we've observed and talked about on the show how after a prolonged period of, of cutting <clears throat> or dieting, or, or at least where the, the main goal is to get lean, yeah. especially like when you do a show and you get shredded, yeah. that post- shredded period where you start to bump your calories up, start working out. You yes. just feel you, you Amazing. like you build muscle like never before your body's just anabolic. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, I just read a study that shows that fasting, uh, increases androgen receptor sensitivity, sensitivity. So the androgen receptors are what your, your anabolic hormone testosterone attached to going through a period of fasting. And I'm assuming cutting calories does this as well. Right. Makes them more sensitive. That's why you feel this muscle building boost. When you do, when you go on a cut and then go back on a bulk, and this is why when someone's bulking, I always recommend little short periods of cuts in between because I notice for myself I seem to build better as a result, and it's the study shows that. Oh wow, hmm. that's fascinating. There, I have I've said that I have felt more anabolic after that after a show like that than I have from taking any anabolic. Isn't that crazy? That's how powerful that feeling is. It's, it's wild, it, and, and it, it does have a lot to do with how long of a period I had been, you know, in a cut for. Yes. And to your point about fasting, that is true because your fasting mimicking diet they've already shown is is gives all the same benefits as somebody who fasts, right? So if you did like the the yeah, if you just longer, go low right? calorie. Yeah. So and you're low calorie for a very long period of time. And then you finally reintroduce mm -hmm. all these calories and that that work that those next three to five workouts, I'd say, after a show, after I've loaded the calories like nonstop is the most amazing I've yeah, ever Yeah, so I guess the takeaway is for people who are trying to bulk the, the, and build lean body mass, it's a good idea, and we've talked about this before, it's a good idea to interrupt your bulk with a short, with some short periods of cuts. So let's say you do three weeks of bulking, three days of cutting. Three weeks of bulking, so three days of So physiological benefits, also psychological, right? Yes. Because then too, it's like, it gets a really, it's, it's quite a chore oh, it's to monotonous. constantly just keep stuffing your face. That's a really good point too, yeah. Justin, as far as, there's also the psychological side of actually just being filled back up that it comes into that workout. So not only do you feel anabolic for yeah. the, the science that you're, that you're saying too, then there's also the psychological part of being fed, yeah. your muscle belly's filling all up and then the pump is so amazing. Like, it's just it's a it's a feeling that is hard for me to 
describe because it's like no other workout or liking those. And it is like no other steroid I've even taken. I've taken steroids before where, you know, I've talked about with you guys. I don't know if we have on air, but like I remember taking D-ball for the first time and it was like, oh my God, I just muscle packed on me. Every time I did shoulders, I was adding like 10 pounds to my shoulder yeah. press every workout. It was just insane the way I felt. Even that doesn't compare to... Isn't it wild? Yeah, that that, wild. that workout the week. Yeah. And anybody who's competed probably can relate to this because they, they've been here before where they have depleted themselves for that long and then that workout mm -hmm. week afterwards just feels right. so amazing. Have you guys seen the the crazy, stupid like sports they're trying to promote now on like ESPN2? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like... I feel like they just need content for some reason. <laughs> what they do now. Dude, so, okay. So, first of all, it was like 4th of July, all that. So, they have their normal, like, Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Adam sent something over with this guy. That, oh, like, see that guy? Yeah. He, like, gets in front of Joey Chestnut and is, like, trying to promote some stupid thing. Bro, he put a headlock on him. Headlocks him. I guess he had an injured leg, too. Oh, really? Uh, That's and, after he ate a shit ton of hot dogs, too. Dude, yeah. The guy's a savage. But, yeah. uh... But so I was I was at this sandwich place and we were eating with the family and um, there was all these TVs on and there was another one going on simultaneously that was it was called a uh, world I forget it was like world tag championships or oh, something world chase tag world chase tag thank what? you what yeah and so it had all these different levels of platforms and like weird I've, like I've railings and things and oh, so you, have? you get have. one person versus the other. And so the guy takes off. The other guy tries to catch him to tag him and has to like jump through all these things and then it's like crazy. climb over the top and like lunge out and try and get it's like it's like a Jackie pandemonium, Chan dude. You ever watch yeah, Jackie it's Chan? It's just like Jackie Chan. Like yes. they're doing crazy shit to try and catch each other. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, yeah I didn't so even know that was a sport. Okay, so uh the objective is, and I'm assuming that the guy who's running gets a little bit of a head start yeah. ahead of the other guy. I think they end up on either side on both sides of the platform. So they take off, and, and then one guy. And I'm assuming it. they have to stay on this course or track, so we can't. So it's go like all a square course, right? So there's all these different obstacles within this square, mm -hmm. and so he's just trying to evade the other guy through all these different maze directions of parkouring that he can get through uh, to to avoid getting caught. And then there's like a time link. I watched it for. I watched some of that for ten. After ten minutes or so, it gets boring. Okay, yeah. so is it, is it uh, more or less common for the guy to get caught? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, that's a good question. It depends it, on the it, time. It, I think was, everybody gets caught. It's kind of 50 50 from what I was watching. Well, every, a lot of people get caught. I would think you would give it to, if it's one on one, well, one on one you gotta, tag is hard. Well, here's the thing. Like when you're like, a kid and you play tag, it's all you versus like five people. So if you miss this guy, then you're going all of a sudden to this guy. True. It's like, you got to have advantage. really good like movement fluency, right? Like, you know how to like just all of a sudden Juke make somebody. a cut that you and know, you've seen that on the field too, where right. somebody avoids like a, a collision yeah. because they just have that foresight. And so some guys were really good at it. Some guys weren't quite as also good. Also anticipating their, their position. Like, like, one yeah, guy like will angling jump through some bars and, and, and like, sh them. like funneling him into the corner. Uh, but yeah, so then there was this other one that came on after that. That was like, <laughs> it was like the world champion. Uh, it, it was like, um, a uh, place setting, like for, <laughs> for what? like table, like fine dining, like place. What? Setting. I was like, what wow. really? Like, is this where we're at now? Like we're watching people like be judged on like how tight their place All setting right. is. And what competition like, would you be the on. world? Let's what invent. You can invent any competition you want. What competition would you be the world champion in? If there was a competition, if the world champion, yeah, what would it be? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not very talented yeah. in a lot of stuff. Dude. Well, I mean, I'm pretty average in a lot of things. Yeah. Was, what am I really? What would you? How about that? Like the most average, <laughs> you know, I mean, the guy who's the average. Like, yeah, that's what it would be. I, like thirty different I sports. Crush. You'd be pretty good at everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not great, not great, right, but not terrible. Top like, fifteen, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in the world, <laughs> it's like the the CrossFit of everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah, you I'm have something that you think you could win. I don't. know. I was gonna say that's reverse curls. I mean, one exercise I'm really good at. Cheese We live in a time where. There's a sport or a thing for everything, so I feel I like you would have you would have found it. Oh, better. I got a trivia question for you guys. Do okay. you guys know who the richest self-made women? I'm gonna look it up. I have it written down. The richest self-made women under the age of 35 are. Oh, under 35. Under 35. You guys want to guess who number one is? The uh, richest. Oprah. No, one of the Kardashians. Self-made woman the, under 35. One of the Kardashians. No. 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 Who? Who? It's Black Rihanna. Uh, oh, Rihanna. 1.4. Billion oh, she's dollars. A billion. billion? She's a billionaire, and she's nice. under 35. I didn't know that. Uh, third with Kylie Jenner. Kylie uh, Jenner was third. Fourth is Taylor Swift. But, dude, uh, Rihanna, she's the richest 
self-made woman under 35. So 1.4 billion. Cosmetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say. Music and cosmetics. So she must have been the one who paved the way for Kylie and then all the other ones that are doing it. So Maybe. she must That's have did it first. That's where they're crushing it. That like the video game, like the apps. I remember like one of the Kardashians like crushed that. Dude, cosmetics is huge business. Huge business because that's where she gets the majority. Well, of especially when you're a, a hot celebrity yeah, chick. Exactly, but it's like you got to be a celebrity first, yeah. you know. And then so that's like, exactly. I want to know the ones that yeah that like made millions off of just one idea. No, oh, well yeah, the second one was that's someone. A, that's a whole different whole monster, right? category. Second whole one was someone. I'd, oh, here you go. You know, second, you know, second is seven hundred forty million dollars. Whitney Wolf Heard. Do you know what she did? I don't even know mm-hmm. who that is. She created Bumble. Oh app. yeah, that's right. Bumble. The dating app. So there you go. There's she sold it. Right? You know who's yeah. like uh, speaking of women, America's most wanted women right now, the crypto queen. What? What she? She do? should be up there. She's worth four billion. How does she? What do you mean? Why does she want? And it? then she she doesn't get the credit because she stole. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> all her money, but she should be up there. Four it's not billion. Quite honest. But like, she she stole four she's billion dollars in crypto. It. Yes. How? They call her the crypto queen. Look her up, Doug. I haven't heard about this. Yeah, crypto queen. I mean, this is part of what's happened. I mean, boy, are we going to see? Uh, yeah, it crypto- sounds like a villain, right? Like a super villain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's got a queen. cryptocopter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's invisible. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's pronounced Ruha Ruja Ignatova. Yeah, I think that's her. Wow. Born yeah. in 1980, so she's not almost, under. She does she's sound 42 like a villain. Years old. Oh, yeah. she's a little too old. Too old for this. She didn't make the status. Cat. No, yeah. oh, I she doesn't count. How did she steal all the crypto? Oh, dude, that's why that's why this thing is going to collapse, bro. Yeah, how did that happen? It's, Everything's it's, collapsing. Let's see if you can pull up a good article on it's it. It's supposed though. to be like not possible. Dude, right? you know what I find interesting right now about what? you talking about collapsing? All the people that are acting like they 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 knew all along <laughs> things were going to get inflated and costs were going to go up. The, where were you guys 14 years ago after two, or 13 years ago or whatever after 2008 when they started, you know, quantitative easing, which basically means the government's going to print a bunch of money? And just buy shit to keep things expensive. Nobody said anything about that except for the Austrian is there economy. Any economists just, left saying that this is all good, right? Yeah. This is oh good well. So no, where were you just two months ago when we were already in a recession? It's transitory. Telling people we're in a we're in a, some of the greatest economic times. I know <laughs> it's so crazy. Now everybody's like, "Oh, I knew this all along." No, you didn't, bro. No, I mean they're calling this, and I think you've said it on the show already the the everything bubble, yep. right? So this is like so here's this a, is going to be interesting to watch. So here's the thing. So I was a big Milton Friedman guy way back in the day. 2008 happened. And I follow a lot of Austrian economic uh, economists. So Austrian economics is not—it's not because they live in Austria, but it's a—it's a very free market form of economics, and they believe that the market corrects, which it does, and the, the proof is in the pudding. After 2008, they were like, "You guys are going to cause some big problems if you do quantitative easing," and they said it'll never end. Mm-hmm. They said they'll never stop because they can't. Once they start pumping that drug in, nobody's going to. Nobody wants pain. to be the person to like stop and that that's from exactly happening. Exactly. Yeah. What's happening? Exactly what's happened. Well, and every, you know, uh, unfortunately, the majority that are voting for the people that make these decisions think that it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, because nobody wants to feel the pain. Nobody yeah. wants, everybody, like, you got a credit limit with a credit card. You're running out of money. And it's like, hey, you need to stop paying for subscription services <coughs> and you can't buy did cars you, you can't that? afford. Did you, or we can give you did more. Did you guys see no that with the cars? Could you no pull this deal. up article for me? I don't know if you read that. The queen was. So she's on FBI's 10 most wanted now. That's yeah. wild, right? Um, I believe, let me make sure I get this correct, but, and I don't know if it's the average or that peak, but I think I read the average uh, car payment in the United States now is a thousand dollars a month. No way. Google that. And see Who what the hell get. pays a thousand dollars a month for a car? Most, uh, uh, more than, more why? Than, yeah, that's what, that's just, a car. It's because of interest rate and the cost of an average car now. Wow. Well, most cars are 50 grand and above, dude. Yeah. So the average car payment in the U.S. climbed to a record seven hundred and twelve dollars a month in oh. June as borrowing costs increase. Oh this is my. a brand new article. Four you know hours what? Ago. I read a thousand. Mm. It's weird. That it's is still high as shit. Seven hundred bucks. Seven, yeah, still wow. That's and we're at higher highest record uh, debt right now. So debt is higher than it's ever been, and so that's part of the scary part of what what might happen, right? So gas prices going through the roof. They're not going to slow down. Inflation's still running, and before people will actually curb their spending habits that they've been doing for the last two to three years, they're more likely to continue to pull more debt out and make it even worse. So, it, it, And all that it will do is kind of kick the can down the, the road. The worst further. possible thing you could finance, I'm just going to say this right now, for most people is a car. That's a losing money. A gar- you're guaranteed to lose money on a car if you buy yeah. a car and you finance it. You, the second you drive it off a lot, you lost thousands of dollars. It's a status quo, dude. I mean, that's a, it's a status quo thing. That's a... 
And it's and it makes you feel rich. And if you can finance it, hey, we voted it. By the way, this is a bipartisan issue. This is not just a Democrat. This is a Democrat Republicans. They Republicans like to talk like they oh, are they fiscally the responsible. Thing. Yeah. But when they're in office, they do the same thing. So we have just rampant spending, and it's been like this for a long time. But after two thousand eight, really took off, and that was it. There was no turning it off. And then COVID happened, and then it was like, yeah, and they turned it way the hell. So what's going to happen? They I was going to see we're going to see crazy shit happen. And they're going to put us into a recession because they have to, you have to feel some pain. I bet you the printing press goes back on. Oh, it has to. Because, because nobody's going to want to let, there's $30 trillion of money in the economy, the, the, I think in the world economy that was been printed. That money needs to get pulled out and corrected for. Nobody's going to want to deal with that shit. That's a big number. You know, no, so, they won't. No. I, and I, and I agree with that prediction. And I would say that comes at the end of next year. So I think we're going to feel the pain uh, starting now, all the way through this year into next year. Next year will be one of the one of the worst years as far as that's all concerned. And I think to start to revive it, they'll start pumping money. And by the way, when they do that, I think they will. We will all have become adjusted to because we'll. I think we'll see as high as ten dollar gas prices, and then when we see gas prices that high, and then we get the relief of bringing it back down to five, we're all going to be like, oh, thank God, it's just it's over. five. It's $5, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I think that's what will happen. I think they'll get us used to seeing this eight, nine, ten dollars $10, and then they'll bring it down a little Drop bit. Drop it at a new high. Uh -huh. yeah. And then and the house prices, I think we were, originally I thought I was gonna, we were going to see a pretty big crash on houses. I don't know. I think what might happen is- It would be is, like a dip. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to see a small dip in correction. Only because investors are going to are going to throw their money in there. Of course. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's just going to- Not home buyers. Because, they're just going to cut out, yeah, your normal home Because buyers. they know that what you just are, what you're predicting right now is that they're going to print again. And when they do that again, it's only going to- The housing market is a very lucrative- for a politician to to pass legislation to protect because the majority of Americans hold their wealth and the value of their home. So it's politically expedient to do so. So they're gonna continue they're gonna pump that first as much as possible. We're gonna is, become we're gonna quickly become a a renter's country. I mean that's we're yeah. heading in that direction and and where it will be different or weird abnormal to own the home like just you rent. Yeah, and people need to know this too with, with quantitative easing which is a, a, they they come up with fancy fancy terms by the way to confuse people. Really what it is is there's they don't want the prices to drop so the government comes in and buys shit to keep the prices high. It's essentially what it is. So if I sold a bunch of pencils and all of a sudden the demand for my pencils goes down and then I'm like, oh my God, I need more pencils. And the government's like, don't worry, we'll just print money and buy them from you and just throw them away because we're not using them and it's printed money out of nowhere. They're going to keep the price of things artificially high. That's what's happened. We, oh, actually, not just keeping them artificially high, but pump them up artificially way high. Yeah. So uh, I, don't know how, I don't know how they're going to back out of it other than allowing shit to fall. Uh, so no, see what happens. It's going to be crazy. Interesting. Buckle up. Hey, check this out. Look, part of being healthy is also having balance. That means enjoying yourself sometimes, like having the occasional alcoholic beverage, like a glass of wine or a beer. Well, check this out. We work with a company called Zbiotics. They make a probiotic drink that's genetically modified to help your gut break down one of the unwanted byproducts of alcohol, which is acetaldehyde. So here's what happens when you drink alcohol. Your, your body has to break it down. Part of the breaking down process is breaking down something called acetaldehyde. Your liver does a really good job of this, but some of that happens in the gut and that gets in your bloodstream and it starts to wreak havoc. Well, what Zbiotics does is it lives in your gut. when you So you drink it before you drink alcohol. These little bacteria produce compounds that break down the acetaldehyde in your gut. So you feel much better. It's pretty cool stuff. Go check this out. Uh, go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T. ICS.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump two two for ten percent off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Teal from Pennsylvania. Teal, how can we help you? Hi, how are everyone? We're really so good. Excited. Thank you. Very good. Great. Well, I'm a little nervous. I've been uh, listening to you guys for six years, so this is really exciting. Oh, so wow. Thank you for taking the call. Um, so I am, I'll start off my question. I'm probably going to read a little bit of my email so I don't, um, ramble too much, but, uh, so I have a morning routine. Um, I'm pretty, I kind of have a type A personality and, um, I've developed a pretty consistent routine in the weekend, kind of a ritual. And, um, I kind of want to get your advice on whether it's kind of, 
um, effective for my overall health goals and my fitness routine. Um, so I wake up kind of early and I drink my coffee and then I walk my dog and then I do some like gardening and housework. Um, and then I work out and then I do all of that, um, prior to then also having to get ready and, and, and work out or then go to work. Um, so if I don't read in the morning while I drink my coffee, if I don't work out, if I don't do any of those kind of those rituals there, I probably won't do it during the rest of my day. I just get too busy. So I do like to do that in the morning. And I've listened to you many times about talking about, you know, uh, working out in the morning because it's, um, you know, good for consistency. I've also run, um, MAPS Anabolic twice. Um, I followed it to a T the first time. And then uh, the second time around, I did split up the exercises because I just really don't have a lot of time to kind of squeeze all those things in the morning. So I only have about 30 minutes to exercise in the morning. Um, but the second time around, I did MAPS Anabolic. Um, I just felt like when I split up the workouts into like five-day kind of workouts, uh, those foundational exercises, I felt like I wasn't really getting a whole lot of out of it. And I'm just wondering if um, the way my routine is of doing all this in the morning is kind of impacting my kind of like strength gains. Because another thing that I wanted to bring up is the fact that I kind of got in this habit of fasting until noon. So I finish my, you know, wake up at like 5.30, I finish um, and it's uh, probably finish around like 7.30 with my workout. And then I don't actually eat until noon. Um, and I'm just wondering like, that a bad idea because I recently listened to um, Dr. Cabral and joined his uh, the holistic health group for, through Mind Pump as well about maybe that's not that great on my metabolism. So um, I have kind of two part questions there is like the fasting impacting kind of those strength gains and also just any advice you have on kind of breaking up the, the foundational workouts um, so I can have that consistent morning routine. I, I definitely don't think what you're doing is bad. Yeah. Like, now, I, now, are you asking simply because your strength gains have stalled or is there anything else that you've noticed? Like, how's your energy? Yeah. How, how's everything else feel? So I feel like um, I was hoping by the second time around that with MAPS Anabolic, I would be able to kind of progress a little bit in my strength gains. Um, and I don't necessarily want to use the excuse that I work from work out from home to be that excuse, but I sometimes feel like it because I only have so much um, dumbbells. And like, for example, if I wanted to do a squat, I just feel like I can only, I can lift probably much more in a squat, but I can't physically pick up the dumbbells with my arms mm. to, um, to, if that makes any sense. Cause I don't have a squat rack. So I feel like I can't progress there. Mm. Okay. So that, that's, uh, you, you, you kind of get into the point now where you might need to change your approach with your workouts. If you aren't, if, if barbells are not available to you and you're not willing to make them available in the sense, maybe get yourself a squat rack, get yourself barbell or go to a gym. I would suggest a different kind of workout, yeah. something different like uh map suspension might be a good example. Um, suspension trainers can be made very intense um, and the resistance can be made very high simply by changing the angle of pull. And it also maintains that convenience that it sounds like you're looking for, which is, you know, you work out for 30 minutes in the morning at home. Um, cause mm -hmm. right now the limiting factor sounds like for those barbell exercises, you just can't go heavy enough because you have dumbbells. Yeah. I, right. I mean, maps performance would be a good suggestion too. We have a dumbbell mod for all those, the core programs. Mm -hmm. So okay. moving to map, I, th I think just something that's novel will help. Uh, break through a little bit of a plateau. I also think that uh, to the point you made about Dr. Cabral and fasting, that's not helping the cause either, right? So if we're trying to progress and build strength and you're also fasting all the, every single day, it, that's probably not helping. I don't think it's hurting you. And if it works for you, I would never tell someone don't do it. Like if you, you like that routine, it helps you manage your calories that way and you feel good. As a client of mine, I'd say, hey, hey, listen, if you feel good, you like that, it helps you manage your calories. Okay, so we may sacrifice. You're not going to be progressing as fast maybe in the weight room, but you like that, then go ahead and stick with it. But if you were at like, Adam, I really want to get stronger. I really want to see myself build this or I'm trying to shape this part of my body. If you're really focused that way and we're also fasting every single day, that's where I might say, okay, why don't we start maybe with a shake in the morning or start to kickstart the metabolism a little bit and actually fuel the body a little bit more and see if that helps support your, your lifting in the inside the yeah. workout. Yeah. I think too, dumbbells, I mean, at a certain point, yeah, if you can lift them with your arms, but, uh, you, I mean, you're, you're capable of more with your legs, obviously like 
unilateral work and uh, like single leg deadlifts and with like Bulgarians and uh, just changing the tempo up a lot. I mean, you can add intensity to those types of exercises and that type of a workout that way. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's an option for you if you haven't really messed around with that yet. Um, yeah. and I do have kettlebells. Uh, well, just a couple. I have like a 35 pound kettlebell that I could do single leg dead deadlifts with, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would yeah, work. So, you know, just thinking those in that direction pretty much, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, you're going to need new stimulus. And so that's, that is a hard one to get like really solid leg work when you're limited to dumbbells. But I mean, that's really like it, in terms of like where you're at for now, that, that would help quite a lot yeah, is to change it up. We need a more complete picture though, too, Teal, because we're just, you're just talking about plateauing a little bit with strength. And although strength <laughs> is a great metric, it's not the only metric. So I need to know energy, sleep, like, are you noticing any other changes or I don't know, plateaus or any negatives anywhere else in your health and, and performance? Not, not necessarily. There's nothing specific. I would say, um, I would like to go to bed earlier. Um, I, I mean, I probably get seven hours of sleep, but that's not I don't know if I'm actually sleeping those seven hours, but, um, yeah, so I think sleep would probably be a big thing. So, and I am just naturally like that type of type A personality where I'm just like, go, go, go right from the beginning. Um, and I kind of, once I get my coffee, I just kind of, um, nonstop. So, um, I do kind of realize that maybe I need to slow down a little bit, but do you, do you feel like you need more caffeine than before or is your energy levels pretty good? Um, not necessarily. As long as I have my one cup in the morning, um, I don't think I could do anything out yeah, without You're, you're doing cup, okay. So. You're fine. You're doing yeah. good, Teal. Yeah. If you start to notice declines in energy, skin, your hair starts to feel brittle, it feels like hormone imbalances, libido is off, mood swings, like you notice your health is starting to go in a different direction or, or in the wrong direction, then I would take a much, much closer look. But it sounds like you're doing okay. You can experiment with eating something small before noon. So maybe after your workout, you could have like two hard boiled eggs. Like that's it. You know, a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat, mm -hmm. see how you feel. A protein shake might be even more convenient. You could try something like that just yeah. to see how I you did try to start doing the protein shakes okay. a little bit earlier. I found that I get hungrier if I eat earlier. Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. why I sometimes hold it off, but then I end up eating like a ton for lunch and then I feel sluggish. Afterwards. Have you, have you actually tracked uh, calories just to kind of see where you're at? Do you have any idea? Yeah. And actually I did have a, a small question about that because I do every now just track calories just, just for curiosity. Um, and, uh, and like weight loss is necessarily something I'm, I'm trying to do by any means. It's just overall health goals. But, um, I, I think, think I'm probably around 2000 calories. I just struggle with olive oil because I just use olive oil like all the time. I just drizzle it and I just don't know how many, I feel like I can easily add probably like 500 extra calories just on top of, you know, they say the two tablespoons, but I don't even know. So sometimes like, I just don't measure everything. That's like, I don't take the time to weigh. And a lot, of so, people, a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't know this, Teal, but olive oil doesn't count. You can eat as much as you want. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> that's, that's, true. That's, uh, yeah. that's you from Italy saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't trust the uh, You know, the one that I would probably be more concerned, like, uh, have, do you know where your protein intake is on a regular basis? Have you, have you, do you have an idea of how many grams of protein you eat every day? Yeah, I have recently really tried to be more mindful of that. And I am, I feel like I'm usually over, I'm usually, I mean, I'm like, I don't know, 110, 115 pounds, and I'm usually like 120, 130. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This may, so. this may be a case of being overcritical. We may be in a situation here and you said you're type A, people mm -hmm. like people in your kind of like your, you know, category tend to over they look at everything and they get real critical and break everything down when everything seems to be doing okay. Really based off what we're hearing, it sounds to me like what you need to do is just kind of change your workout. Especially when your goal is overall health, right? right. Like you're, you just want to be healthy. You're not, mm -hmm. you, you've already made that clear. You're not trying to lose a bunch of weight. I don't, it didn't sound like you're trying to you build a bunch of muscle or gain a bunch of weight. It sounds like you are pretty healthy. It sounds like you got a pretty good balance going on now. Sometimes that happens in the weight room, especially if you're doing the same routine and you're limited with weights. 
Uh, plateaus right. are very normal. I mean, we deal, I mean, and even sometimes a little bit of a regression, depending on what you're, it's not weird to see that. Um, and if the main goal is health, uh, the thing I'm concerned about is the stuff that Sal was saying, like, um, are you sleeping well? Do you have good sustained energy? Are you not having to suck down the caffeine like crazy? Pretty happy with the weight. You don't feel like you're retaining a bunch of water, feel bloated. If I mean, if all those things are, you're checking all those boxes, you're probably doing pretty damn good. Yeah, you know, cha change your bilateral exercises uh, for lower mm -hmm. body to unilateral. Just do that. So instead of, you know, double leg squat with dumbbells, Bulgarian split stance squat with dumbbells. That'll make it intense. And instead of a deadlift with both legs, mm -hmm. do a single leg deadlift. Basically what I said. Yeah, exactly what yeah. Justin said. Mm -hmm. go, go unilateral with the lower body. That'll give you the the extra resistance that you need. And I think that would probably be enough. Okay. And you think that like even, and I know, I mean, I do usually do it five days a week, but I don't feel like I go super, super hard. Like I'm not like sweating. I'm not, and I just walk other, other than that. That's okay. Um, That's yeah. okay. You're fine. You're, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I actually, I actually prefer anabolic split too. Yeah. I, I tend to I tend to break up anabolic. It works better that way for me than the the long one set the one session you know foundational day. I like to split it up. I don't think that's hindering you at all. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely stick with that and try to be a little bit more just less critical. I guess. I, well, yes. I think I think Doug yeah. is going to send you over map suspension also from us. So okay. you can play with that a little bit too. So it won't hurt to add. I think just having yeah, just a good new stimulus. Yeah. Player. Novel exercises are going to, we're going to help out. Um, but yeah. And then maybe in the future, consider like a PRX rack uh, where you can attach it to your wall and fold it away. So you can still use your garage and uh, bar okay. I mean, just, I think there's a lot of value in having a, a barbell squat rack at your place. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for calling in Teal. Thanks for the support right. too. Yes. Thank you. Have a good one. You, you too. too. Yep. Yeah, I I think that's a bit of a case of the yeah. No, I think you, I think you I think yeah. you hit it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've had clients like that where it's like they're doing really well. Yeah, everything's consistent. They're doing really well. It's like they get nervous because it's like they're doing well. Is this really going well? Well, yeah. Sad, or your your type A's have very high expectations for yeah, themselves. High expectations. So it's like you're putting all the work in, and then if you're not seeing the like serious results. Like I'm not adding weight or to you the don't feel a crazy struggle. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. So then it's like, man, should I be doing more? I'm not doing enough because I'm not seeing more results. It's like, well, listen, when your goal is overall health, uh, you sound pretty damn healthy to me. It sounds like you got a pretty good yeah, morning routine. Sounds great. And, yeah. and you know, and again, a type a personality to hear an episode like Dr. Cabral, who then tells the benefits of eating in the morning and then goes, Oh shit, I've been skipping breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I need to change. It. It's like, well, wait a second here. Hold on. Like, and, and that's where this is so important. Like, yeah, you can make the case why that there is value to that metabolism wise and what Cabral talked about. But then you also have to take into account, like, does this work for your lifestyle? Like, do you like not eating till noon because it helps you manage your calories and keep you at a healthy weight? And you feel good. And you feel good. Yeah. And, and if that's the case, then I don't care what doctor says what about how the benefits of you eating in the first thing in the morning. It's like, this works really well for you. Let's continue to do it. Now, different story. If you look at me and go, hey, I'm really struggling with this or my energy dips or I don't feel good or I'm having trouble sleeping. Okay. Well now we can explore some other, maybe it is you not eating all the way till noon every single day. And then maybe we change that. Yeah. The other, the other side of this too, is even the client where not only are they just feeling good, but they're progressing. And then they're like, what else can I add to progress faster? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. ever get that? Like, Oh, yeah. I'm like, you just gained 20 pounds in your squad. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Everything's keep it, going good. Let's, let's just stick with it. Keep it where it's at. Our next caller is Emily from Arizona. Emily, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. So excited to be here on the show. And uh, yeah, long time listener, like the last three or four years, pretty consistently. So I'm excited to get to talk to you guys. Awesome. All right. Um, so uh, just a little bit of background about me. I'm a certified athletic trainer. Um, so I work in sports medicine. I have been at my school. This is going on my third season um, with my school. I work at a prep school um, where we have mostly basketball athletes. So all of my kids are getting recruited to play D1. You know, we just had a couple of kids get drafted to go to the NBA. So I work with like very high level athletes awesome. um, this upcoming year. Uh, my job is kind of like evolving. They, you know, decided that they like me and they trust me and, you know, like what else can we do to like benefit our kids? Because a lot of them are recruited to come into the school. 
Um, so, you know, their parents are like kind of leaving them in Arizona with us and just trusting us with them to like take care of them, that we're going to give them like the best, you know, chance to get into college and, you know, to play professionally eventually. So this upcoming year, I'm helping with uh, the nutrition coaching as well. So we have a chef at the school who's going to be preparing all their meals like from scratch every day, um, which is awesome. Wow. And then we also hired a strength and conditioning coach. So like a guy who's a CSCS has worked in basketball for a long time as well. So like, I know I have a good team around me, but they kind of put me in charge of tracking everything. They're like, we want to do preseason and like, you know, a couple like monthly check-ins just to like make sure that everything we're implementing is beneficial. So a lot of the parents and everything, you know, they want to know, you know, well, is my kid progressing? So honestly, um, my question was, you know, like, what do you guys think will be the best way to track? Um, It'll be body composition, like performance. So, you know, like how they're doing on the court weight room. And then I want to track their injury prevention. So like we haven't worked we've worked with strength coaches in the past, but it just hasn't been like super consistent. So this year, I think it will be a little bit more consistent than it's been in the past. Um, And just keeping that like, you know, as cheap as we can do it as possible would be awesome. And then, yeah, what, like whatever is going to be the most beneficial to like, you know, show our coaches and parents and the administration that, you know, the money we're spending on, you know, these things that we're implementing this year are like worth it to mm. keep doing in the future. Well, this is cool. I wish you could send my kids to the school. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. Okay. Recruited, how, pretty much recruited only, but how, yeah. How old are the kids that you're working with? Um, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. They're all like pretty much junior seniors in high school. Yeah. yeah, I I think um I personally I would look at cuz you're already tracking their their performance and their strength you said, right? So you're already looking at things like how much weight yeah. they can lift and How are you doing that by the way too? Are you using any of the the grip testing as as part of that? No, so that's kind of the thing is this is the first year we're going to have this strength coach at the school. So me and him have kind of been going back and forth on, you know, like what do we want to do mm-hmm. preseason testing wise? Like do we want to do grip strength? Do we want to do, you know, um, three rep maxes? Do we want to do a 40 yard dash? Do we want to go get them bod pod tested or just do like skin calipers of the school? So like we have a lot of resources open, but it's just like, what's going to be the easiest to do month to month? What's going to be the cheapest? And like, what's going to show the most benefit is really like what we're looking at. I, which, I like all that if it's feasible. Totally. If it's feasible, the more the more metrics that you can get, uh, the better off you're going to be. Did you ever listen to the episode? HRV that, even? Yeah. Did you do? The, did you listen to the episode we did with Corey Schlesinger? I don't think so. Okay, you should go back and listen to that. So he yeah. now works for the Suns. He was working for uh, Santa Clara at the time. Uh, He's the basketball okay. coach. Stanford, but yeah. or, or excuse me, yeah. is it Stanford? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, he was for Stanford. And he was the basketball, the strength and conditioning coach for Stanford is now the strength and conditioning coach for the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. Good friend of ours. Okay. And uh, he did some stuff that I, and I don't know, and, and maybe in that episode, he talked about the app that he was using. Yeah. I think a metric that you didn't bring up that I thought was very interesting he talked about was their workload week to week and specifically for injury prevention like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So the strength and conditioning Mm -hmm. coach would work hand in hand with the basketball coaches that were running them on the courts and stuff and they were actually tracking the the athletes like how much workload they were putting in and then he would he would manipulate how much he would push them in the gym based off of how much the coach was running them on the right. court and they would they would they would do load management basically so instead instead of running separately where I'm the on the strength and conditioning coach this is my routine I run it every single week the same way and I'm the you know basketball head coach and so I run my by players this way they were working together and he would modify as the strength and conditioning coach oh maybe today I was originally going to do heavy lifting, heavy squatting, stuff like that. But I guess co- head coach decided to run the shit out of the kids the last two days. And so actually I'm going to do more rehab work with my players because injury prevention is so important. That's the best way, I mean, in terms of like stress management. And I know there's sophisticated software out there that's expensive. And so you're trying to do this a little bit more on the cheap, right? And so like, that's why I mentioned <laughs> grip testing is, you know, one of those options, like you're just like consistently testing them before workouts just to see, you know, what kind of response they have in terms of their CNS. Because that's going to vary a bit and i've been playing around with it 
uh, with these student athletes and kind of like paying attention. And it does reveal a bit about their readiness. So uh, it is a valuable resource for that. That's on the cheaper side of it. And instead of going with like a whoop or like a, you know, an HRV where they're, where they're strapped up, uh, you know, checking that variability. Uh, so I, but everything else you mentioned, like I've, I've implemented like, so that's, that's great. Like another thing too, like in terms of like just a quick mobility check and, and to see like, you know, in terms of like their joint health and whatnot, like I just use our compass tests. So for prime, I don't know if you have our prime programs or not, uh, but you could run through and even do like your own, uh, even go into prime pro, maybe like, you know, if, fixated on the, their ankles and, and, and knees a little bit more, uh, rather than just, you know, our three sort of checkpoints that we do in our broad, um, type of testing in, in prime. So you can get a little more sophisticated in it that way. Uh, but that's something you can always show a little bit of progress, a little bit of, you know, gain of range of motion, a little bit more control, uh, strength in that. Um, but in terms of like, uh, a three rep max, I think is brilliant. Um, that's something that I, I didn't want to do one rep because yeah, there's a little more risk to that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a totally different skill set. Uh, the kids have to learn. So I don't know how much time you have to really, you know, uh, implement that as well. But, uh, yeah, I think between that and then like, if you can do just vertical jump, obviously basketball, super specific to that, uh, mm -hmm. and then 40 yard dash and then, uh, you know, shuttle run, uh, something like that, that you can like do time tests with out in the field, uh, really quick, really easy, uh, shows a lot of, um, you know, like you're just, you have a lot of metrics and you're paying attention. You can send that off to the parents. Yeah. If you happy. can, if you can show that athletes are maintaining a healthy body fat percentage, they're getting faster, they're jumping higher, they're getting stronger. Yeah. Uh, that in itself. And then, and then you're managing their load management. To me, those five points right there are huge. Yeah. Like your kid yeah. is, your kid is either maintained or lost body fat percentage. He is jumping higher. He is running faster. He is stronger in the gym. Like that is mm -hmm. like, I mean, that's a win all the way across. And then, and he's not injured because we're managing, right. we're managing his load and making sure that we're not over stressing his body, but we are pushing him to reach new PRs. Yeah. Like to and, and, and the reason why I asked the age is because right around that so right, 17, 18, 19, they've now been playing for a while. It sounds like they're high level based off yeah. of what you're telling me. I mean, they have a chef cooking them food and you're recruiting them. A lot of this, and you see this with higher level athletes uh, with experience, a lot of it is 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 preventing injury. So right. when they're young, it's like push them to get stronger, push them to improve performance. But when they start to get to that level, if you just keep them from getting hurt and overtraining, their performance does excellent. And so that really becomes key because, uh, like, again, they, they, they probably are getting trained a lot. They're probably doing a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. It sounds like there's a lot of focus on their performance. <laughs> So I would worry. I would worry more about mobility and uh, recovery, and how do I keep them healthy, rather than what can I add yeah. to push their performance even further? Because they're probably already kind of redlining. They're probably already at that level. They've been training for so long. They're such high level that if you just keep them healthy, prevent overtraining, mm -hmm. and don't get them hurt or, or keep them from getting hurt, then they're gonna they're gonna do great. Do you have a good relationship with the the coach in terms of like their practice schedule and like all, so you could actually like acquire a lot of that workload so you could like write it down and chart it? Yes. I mean me and my head coach have like an awesome relationship, but it, it's not like he's going to change his practice plan. If uh, like you know, I think they're being overworked. Like, no, 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 no. So, the, yeah. so the coach, the head coach, the head coach is <laughs> right. not going to change his shit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. You're exactly. working around that. That's right. where, like, the, I know that me and the strength and conditioning coach are more going to have to teach yes. the yes. things that we're doing in terms of like rehab testing, yes. what they're doing in the weight room, what they're doing, you know, uh, in their agility training. Like, I know that's where things are going to need to be tweaked versus at practice but we have a great relationship and i'm at practice every day like i don't miss a practice when they're at the gym i'm there just in case somebody gets hurt because yeah. they want me to be like first person on the scene like to be able to evaluate and kind of like you know get the ball rolling if you know they need to be referred or you know i just need to take their ankle to get back to practice so i'm there all the time just like i know their workload is. so just you being able to get an idea of what 
a uh, like we just want to get an idea of what I, I would consider like a, a low workload and then a high workload. And then based off of that, as the strength and conditioning coach, yeah. I'm going to adjust Two different workouts. You, that's right. You, that's right. You, so I've got let, let's just say this is uh, let's say it's a week. Head coach is uh, the guys are conditioned. It's a, they, they're, they're ready to go. We're ready for the game. We're doing walkthroughs, a lot of just mm-hmm. like basic drill stuff. I'm not really pushing the boys hard. That would be considered very low. And then I and, and on a week like that, then my strength and conditioning guy can push the limits a little bit in the weight room because they're so well rested there. Mm -hmm. And then I have the other extreme where coaches like, we got our asses kicked. We were getting, we were, we were not conditioned well. You fuckers are running this week. This is, and he's pushing the shit out of them. Yeah. And and then now, yeah. my strength and conditioning coach needs to know, like, oh, this week is recovery. We're re, recovery, we're rehabbing. We're doing mobility, yeah, mobility, mobility, stability stuff, like more co- foot control. We're not pressing the weights, and so. That in itself, I think, if you guys can get to that level where the strength and conditioning coach yourself are are mirroring what what's going on with the head coach mm-hmm. and and really mm-hmm. changing the routine based off of the the workload they're doing, I think that's going to do enough injury prevention wise. And then if you use Justin's suggestion as a grip test, you can start to correlate like, oh wow, that boy, this that really does work when they. I like that because it's daily. You yeah. know, they come in, they yeah. they they squeeze the uh, you know the the. Dynamometer, it's just routine, yeah, and then you know, oh, we got to train easier because it doesn't. Because here's the, here's the other thing: there's also lots of uncontrollables. There's they're teenage right. boys, so maybe the workload is low with the head coach. The girlfriend but, just dumped on. Yeah, yeah, dude just didn't go to sleep for two days in a row because he's hanging out with his girlfriend, or maybe something happened, or yeah. whatever, or his diet's been crap. So I like that because that tells you right then and there you're going to train harder or you you got to train. Well, easier. that's why all the metrics, all the metrics you can take are are only going to help you, right? So without it being over the top, right? As long as it's and it's it's it's. Yeah, you just don't need to present it to the student athletes, right? Right. Uh, that's just for your own right. uh, data yeah. points. Yeah. Yeah, because to Sal's point, it's a great point. Like it could have been a low workload for the the coach, but then the strength conditioning coach does the strength test by everybody, and he goes, "Oh wow, for some reason Timmy is like this is like the worst grip test he's ever done." So even though mm-hmm. I had planned, yeah, he was playing video games all night. <laughs> yeah, you know, even though I had planned to run everybody in the ground, what what he may not know is maybe you know Timmy's coming off a cold or getting ready to get sick or he had a stressful week, whatever, and so he's going to manage him individually, right? Because he sees that, so. Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer to do that on a daily basis, but that's kind of one of the things that I think I'd be looking at. It sounds like you guys are, yeah. are set up. I'm mm-hmm. pretty excited to hear about how this goes. Yeah, me too. I yeah. think this next year, just having all the help that I'm going to have, like compared to like my previous last two seasons, because before I was kind of doing, I think I was just doing a little too much. It was hard to like keep track of everything, yeah. you know, yeah. and I was more playing catch up rather than prevention. So I feel like this year, and I think that's a really great idea to do the grip testing. I hadn't thought about to do that like every single day. I was yeah. more thinking every like day. Every, month, day. every day. Every day. I think doing that every day would be like pretty cool, actually. Well, Absolutely. yeah. Imagine the cool feedback uh, you can yeah. even imagine the cool feedback you can even give the parents, like that you're so in tune right. with like his. You know, after you've charted that for weeks consistently, you go, "Oh wow, it seems like." Timmy again well, on, on weekends he must yeah. go really hard because Monday morning when he rolls in he's always testing especially weak. okay especially and here's something I found out through doing that was uh, you know some of the kids that literally look like baby giraffes like they, they just are flimsy and have like very little body control it, like consistently doing grip testing and you start to teach them how they need to be able to tense their entire body and how and, and you know be able to produce that type of intrinsic force and uh, carry that throughout their body uh, you start to see a change in, in the way that they lift too, in the control they have with um, these major compound lifts, especially. So there's a lot of carryover in terms of value of that as well. Yeah, definitely. All right. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for calling Good in. Good luck, Emily. Yeah. Thank you guys. It was thank great you. to meet you. You too. All right. Yeah. It's uh, um, when, when, when kids are, the younger kids are, the more you're focused on pushing this general performance, the high, the higher, the level, because you look at like professional athletes, what percentage of the training that uh, Steph Curry does, for example, is towards yeah, preventing I didn't, injury I didn't, recovery? I didn't want to get into it with you about that, but I don't fully agree with what you said. Like, it's not – they're still at a, a young – they're pretty fucking resilient, bro. They're, you're, you're talking about a college athlete 
yeah. it, it, heading into well, pro. The, what I'm saying yeah. is it's, they're it, at that. You're right, but they're at that cusp, especially well, with the school. Especially yeah, yeah. a school like this, like sure, like, do you, do you know, high school that recruits them, yeah. kids and has a chef. Sure, sure. I bet you these kids are like no, already. But I, pushing yeah, but this it. is this is not where the uh, this is not where the 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 switch of like okay, all we're worried about is injury. Prevention. No, not all. This is this is you are prime testosterone wise. You are resilient as fuck. We are still kind of throttled down right now. Yeah, to get it's, the most it's on it's on top of mind, but also like they need to build. Build a foundational strength base that yeah. is like a really high priority with with that age group, um, but yeah, like uh, simultaneous to that, have to do constant checkups of their their joint health well, and mobility. That's what I mean because yeah. you have you have what ends up happening is you have th separate coaches working with students. Each coach has their agenda, and each coach wants to push their agenda. Yeah, and so if they don't communicate, they don't do the testing. You know, you brought up Schlesinger, which I thought was great because that's exactly what they did, and that's yeah. what worked. Yeah. But when what happens when you have a strength coach, you have a head coach, you have this, you know, oh. sports medicine individual working with them, everybody's pushing them. Dude, it's next level attention. if if coaches could all communicate like that together and like um, figure out like and chart how much workload they're like hammering them with in practice because then like you, that's valuable information for me to know in the gym. Like, that's it. That's that. it. To me, yeah. that's it. I mean, uh, th that's all they really. If that's already such a, a step in the right direction for high school kids. Yeah. That you're so ahead. I mean, we were talking about Corey Schlesinger, who's ahead of the game, who's ahead of the game in the college level. I know. If she's already moving, if, if this school is moving that way in high school, very few high schools are even thinking yeah. like that. Corey's going to be one of the best in the NBA. Watch. Yeah, no, I mean, well, the shit, there's, the Suns are one of the best, was the best team last year as yeah. far as he record just got, He's just getting started, so. Yeah, no, I, they're they're phenomenal. What they He's phenomenal what he did. That's a great episode for her. Like, God, did you see that? It's 9, 907? That's fucking, oh, it was that long ago? Wow. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got to call, send him a text because the season's over. Yeah. We should bring him back on because I didn't realize that's, that's been years. That's then. 2018. Yeah. Okay. No, wow. Yeah, we need, we need some updates. Yeah. No, we, we should definitely get back into it with him. Our next caller is Abby from Wisconsin. Hey, Abby, how can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Good. 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 Um, so I just wanted to first say like everybody does, um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to take my question. Um, I will just go right ahead and read my question. Um, so I've been a personal trainer since 2017 and I started working in the gym from 2018 to 2020. And, um, after I left the gym in 2020, I started to, um, I went off on my own to work with clients on my own. Um, I work with people both on the fitness and nutrition side. Um, and I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of meeting my clients where they're at. Um, and I feel like I start to sometimes with working with clients, um, I can't get them to commit to um, sometimes some of the things I have them do. So I usually digress to try and meet them where they're at. Um, I feel I put in all of this time and energy and um, I feel like put my heart and soul into it. So my question is when and how is it a good time to know when it's uh, when you should let a client go? Um, I hate, I absolutely hate the thought of letting clients go. And I know you guys have said before that it's ultimately a trainer's fault of why their clients can't see progress. But I was just wondering if there is a time to let the client go and try and keep some sanity on your end. I so think, I love your guys' opinion. I think it's less about that and it's more about you getting better at managing expectations. So instead of thinking that you know, you're putting all this energy and effort in these clients and you're working so hard to try and get them to get to the, where these results that they want and they're just not following what you tell them to do. And it's then you're thinking like, God, does this mean I'm, I should fire these people? No. What you need to do is get better at managing the expectations. Like, okay, if you don't want to follow your, follow your diet, Susie, that's totally okay with me. I'll still give you a great workout when you come and see me. Just keep in mind what is going to potentially happen if you do that. So that's where you just need to improve on communicating to them when they're not executing and following through on things that you know are crucial to them potentially seeing what they say is their goals or, or what they really want and really questioning that. Like, 
you know, are you sure you're a 10 as far as like really wanting to lose these 30 pounds? Because you say it's really important to me, but then the things I'm telling you that are extremely important for us to follow and be consistent with in order for you to get there, we're not doing consistently. In fact, we're maybe 20 or 30 percent of the time doing it, which means at best we're going to be lucky to get 20 to 30 percent of the results if we do that, which I'm totally OK with because I love training you. You're a great client. We've built a great relationship. You come in consistently to see me. I can what I can offer you is we are going to work out. I'm going to help keep strength on you. I'm going to do these things. It's going to be good for your mental health. And I'm going to I'm going to paint the picture of the positive things that you are at least doing, but I'm also going to be very realistic with you on because we're not following X, Y, and Z uh, that we're not going to see because of that. And so I think that's really what this is more about than like, there's very few clients that I I actually had to fire or say like, we can't work together anymore. Um, It's more about managing expectations, I think, than, than, than firing the client. Yeah. Do you, do you have like, because I mean, I I did have a line that, uh, Mm -hmm. that would, there was a line that if it got crossed, I wouldn't want to work with someone. And really it was just my time. So if I'm here Mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be here and you don't show up and you, you don't want me to charge you for a session when that happens, then I can't work with you obviously because now it's affecting uh, my business. But if they showed up, if they at least showed up, I know that at least for two or three hours a week, they're working out, which is better than nothing. Right. So that's, that's, you know, what Adam's saying with expectations, hundred percent, that's, that's, that's the, that's the point. That's everything right there because at least they're showing up. It's better than nothing. But you also have to be honest when they ask you, hey, why am I not getting results? Well, here's why is you don't do anything I tell you. <laughs> so, And that's yeah. okay. Like you got to yeah. be honest, but you also, you know, you also have to have your line, right? And then here's the other side of it. Here's the business side of it. Is there an amount of money that a client could pay you, a specific client that maybe you're thinking about, that would make it worth your while? I had a client like this. There was somebody I, I trained. They were the biggest pain in the ass in the world. And I said to myself, you know what? It would be worth my while if they paid me twice as much as my going rate. Mm -hmm. And so then I told them, my rates are going to go up, but this is my rate. And if you can't pay it, I'm sorry, I can't train you. And then they paid it. And I was okay with them (laughs) being a pain in the ass because I got paid twice as much, right? So so these are the discussions you have to have with yourself. But don't it, you? this is the hard part about being a trainer. You have to both take it personally and not take it personally. You have to take mm-hmm. it personal in the sense that you're the guide, but you also have to not take it personal when they decide not to take your advice. That's funny you brought that up because I noticed that immediately when uh, I was raising my rates, like how much more bought in uh, my clients were. <laughs> and it just makes perfect sense for you know people coming in that's like, I'm making this commitment and I'm I'm – tied to this, you know, with, with a financial commitment. And it's really is kind of one of those things that really maybe pushes somebody a little bit more into the serious uh, side of like, really like implementing a lot of what you're trying to, um, you know, teach and, 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 and instruct them on. But at the end of the day, people, I mean, just getting there for them, you, you have to kind of put yourself back into that, that uh, mindset. It's, it's, that's the, the, the biggest challenge, the biggest hurdle is to get them to consistently even show up. So um, it, it is a lot of like what I was talking about, about getting that expectation kind of back, um, you know, celebrating the wins when they're there, um, scaling back a lot of the goal setting in terms of like, how can we now implement something really simple that you know is going to have a little bit more impact with this type of a person? So it's not like they feel like they're just, they're, they're, they're not accomplishing anything. Yeah. So they, as, as you build your portfolio and you get, more experienced, you're going to get better and better about fishing this out before you even get here. For example, like later on in my career, I started to do this thing that uh, I've talked about on the show before, but I wasn't doing this for the first 10 years where if you wanted to hire me as a trainer, you first had to go track for two weeks for me, food, your weight in the morning, your weight. I mean, I gave them a, a pretty rigorous list of things they had to go give to me before you could pay me to then take care of you. Mm -hmm. And what happened more often than not, people couldn't even go two weeks of writing down their food to present to me for us to start. And so right away I knew like, if you can't do that when you're the the most motivated and you're ready to make this change in your life, you're not ready to be a client of mine because I'm going to give you a lot more tasks than just that over the course of the next six months. And you're going to have a lot more times when you're not feeling like it and you're less motivated than you are currently at this moment you're not ready for me. Yeah. Now consider that at that point, Adam had clients knocking down his door too. Right. So right. you, know, you might I, not be in that position. That's why I say when you build your portfolio totally. and you get the experience, you'll get to that. Totally. Point. But you know, here's an, here's an example of being honest, right? So, you know, let's say I have somebody I'm working with and 
I'm trying to help them with nutrition and they're doing nothing, right? Or they're doing none of what I tell them to do. I yeah. stop helping them with nutrition and then they'll bring it up to me. Sal, can you, you know, help me with my diet? And I'm like, John, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't want to because we did and it didn't work. And I honestly don't think you're ready. So let's just focus on this other stuff first mm -hmm. and let's be consistent with that. And then maybe I'll, I'll bring it up again later. But it just, that's what I mean by being honest, right? You can be very honest with the person and still care and show up and do, you know, get, get them to be better off than they would be without you. But you got to be very careful with the, you know, uh, taking it personal, but not taking it personal. Cause otherwise it gets to this whole, like, if you're not going to do what I tell you, then I don't want to train you type of deal, which that can often be worse off for the client. If you really want to help somebody, I've done that. I blew someone out a long time ago yeah. because of that. And then they ended up not working out. And I was like, shit, you know, at least they were coming two days a week. Now they're doing right. nothing because I blew them out of the, out of the water which, you know, didn't help anybody. Right. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Um, I think I just, I definitely put myself in their shoes where, you know, starting back on my fitness journey, I wish I would have had a personal trainer. And I think I just understand, you know, what such a great tool and resource that trainers are, you know, it's it just, I, I know I have to take myself out of that situation yes. Yes. and um, know that common. every single person is going to be different. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Well, that totally makes sense. Ma many You're clients, I'm right gu now. I guarantee every one of us in this room have had many clients where all we did was ACE. I have had clients where all I did was focus on cardio with them because that's all that I could get them to commit to and focus on. There's some clients, all we did was nutrition. I had some clients, all we did was working, even though I knew that I needed to help them with everything and they would benefit so much more if they allowed me into the other aspects of their life but that was all they would let me in on. And so then I would do the best I could impacting that little sliver they would give me. And then when, if, and when they came back to me and were frustrated with not seeing progress or not, you know, whatever, I would say, well, these are the reasons why, you know, and you can, you can drip that right. While you're training, you can kind of hint to that. I think that a real good trainer can do that. Like in between the sets, you can be like, Oh man, if man, you're doing so good working out right now. I'm so proud of where we're living. Like if we could just get that diet dialed in, boy, I can't imagine the results. I mean, I'm, I'm saying things like that all the time, planting the seed to try and motivate them to want to be inspired to do the other things. At the same time, I'm also managing expectations by letting them know that's why we're not seeing these things, you know, because yeah. we're not following those, those things I'm saying. Yeah. You're, you're, as a coach, your job is to have the door be open. They have to step through it. At the end of the day, there's nothing you can, you can't force them through. Yeah. They have to be the one to step, but you always got to keep the door open. Just think of it that way. Let me keep the door open. And when they're ready, they'll come over. I mean, I've had clients lose 30 pounds in three years. It took them three years to lose 30 pounds. Yeah. And it all happened at the end when everything finally clicked. So think about that. Two and a half years, I had to sit there, listen to this person tell me how much they want to lose weight when in reality they didn't want to do what was necessary. So I had to manage that, manage those expectations until it finally all came together. Right. Yeah, definitely. It, it all makes sense. It just, sometimes I, it tugs at my heart strings a little bit just to know, you know, at the end of the day, I have to um, refocus and come at it at a different angle. So completely. Yep. yep. Totally. So hey, thank you, Abby. Those are the challenges of being a trainer, Abby. You're, you're not alone. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm, I'm getting there and I'm learning more every day and, you know, just, um, and that's, I, I really appreciate your guys's content and I, um, I've gotten my sister-in-law on board with your guys's programs and, um, I'm actually, I'm in phase two of anabolic right now. So I am, um, live and breathe your guys's programs right Thank now. You. Abby, do you have prime nice. and prime pro? I have prime, but I don't have prime pro. We'll send that to Doug, you. send her prime pro. Before Adam loses his <laughs> shit, I'll send that. I'll send it over He has to one you. eye twitching right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send it over. We'll yeah. send it over. Well, well, yeah, awesome. Close. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. All right, Thank you, Abby. Abby. Abby, have a good one. Awesome. Have a good day. You too. Yeah, I had a, I had a client once right hire me because they want to lose weight, and then <laughs> as we're training, you know, this at this point now I had been more experienced, right? So uh, as we're training, they're gaining weight, right? They're gaining weight as we're working out through this process. And then, you know, she asked me, she's like, why, why am I gaining body fat? I was like, well, because you're eating too much. You're not following what we're doing nutrition. <laughs> and they'd be like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, that's what's happening. And that's fine. When you're ready, then it'll go in the opposite direction. But at least you're here working out with me. And I would just be honest. You know, you don't have to lie. You'd be very straightforward and honest. Manage expectations. That's totally. it. Yeah. 100%. Well, that's there, everything. Dude. There's a skill to that, though. There yeah. really is. Totally. You know, because it, it's hard not to be like. Especially when you're new and you're so yes, passionate. Yes. Like, that's, you're like this evangelist. That took, like, you, ah. took me years to get there. It took me a long oh, time. This is 10 years later. Yes. It took me a long time. But that's where you need to get, right? It's not. This is not. 
you need to fire the, the the client. This is not like they're they're you you don't need to like have the come to Jesus and hammer them about things. It's, no, it's just that listen, some people are not going to be ready to commit to all the things that you want them to commit to for them to see these ultimate results, which you obviously want because it looks good for you as a trainer and you want to help people. And you like, have the answers. Right, and, and you have the answers. But the truth is, if they're not asking, they're not wanting to your point, walk through the door. You don't want to shove them through the door. Just wait. But then you also can't ignore, like, what? here's a mistake that a, a young trainer, they, they, okay, they start to get that. They're like, okay, well, I'm just going to train them. But then they don't communicate while they're doing that because what you need to do you have to, to do, keep finding ways yeah you got to yeah. set the table for what's coming that because i know if a client comes to me and they want to lose 50 pounds and they refuse to track nutrition or steps or movement or any things and all i got is three days of lifting weights the likelihood we're going to lose all the weight they want is probably really low yeah. so i'm i'm not only am i i'm not going to push the nutrition i'm going to give them what they want but then i'm also going to let them know like you know what's really cool is we're definitely going to be getting some str- we're going to get stronger and yep. hopefully speed up your metabolism but until we get to the point where we're tracking calories, it's going to be real. that scale, though. Yeah, so you 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 can't just I- ignore that they're not following that and not communicate. No, to you them. can't not care. You got to care. You just got to find find a way. And sometimes it takes years to find a way. I literally, I've had clients where it's taken years. Right. Uh, but you, but like it's, that's what being honest is all about. It's like you have those conversations. Leave it alone. Yep. Our next caller is Cody from Wisconsin. What's up, Cody? How can we help you? Hey guys, how are we doing today? Good, it's great good. to be on the show. Chilly. I appreciate you guys taking my call. Um, happy 4th of July, by the way. Hey, hey uh, yeah. up in, America. Up here America. in Wisconsin, uh, Justin would love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah dude, give me some cheese curd, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, a little bit of background about myself. Um, I'm 5'7", about 185 pounds, pushing 190, trying to be about as wide as I am tall. Uh, been in the army for about seven years now, and I just got done with recruiting for them actually. So I have uh, a extra special thank you to you guys for what I'm doing now, which is uh, nutritional coaching, because without awesome. you guys, oh, cool. I wouldn't have discovered Jason Phillips and his team over there at NCI. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And uh, so first question I got for you is what kind of, uh, what kind of carbs do you guys recommend eating for energy, like in the morning? Because I know through the courses that I've taken um, from their level one nutrition coaching, uh, I learned that the carbs are like counter-regulatory to the insulin production, or (laughs) I'm all mixed up. The, you eat carbs, it produces insulin, which turns off cortisol and you want to backload your carbs so that you have your cortisol curve lowest at night so that you can uh, start producing the melatonin. And uh, so I was just curious, what gets the energy going for you in the morning then? Well, what do you, what do you need the energy for? Are you doing just a regular strength training workout? Uh, yes. Yeah. I typically work out in the mornings. If you're doing like a, tradi- like a traditional strength training workout, about an hour, hour and 20 minutes long, you, need to, you don't need to worry about eating a big old ass carb meal before that. The carbs you ate the night before are going to fuel that. The only people that I would have worry about eating carbohydrate rich meal a couple hours before athletic performance are people who are working out for like two hours, stamina, endurance, high intensity type stuff. That's when it kind of makes sense. Also, you could also drink carbohydrates during your workout. Um, that'll help a little bit with that. But if you're just lifting weights, you're fine um, with the carbs you had the night before. It's not something you need to necessarily work about. I, uh, I also before. think there's there's a bit of an individual variance Personal here. preference here. Okay. Right? And so just so you know, okay, I, I – built myself into the biggest monster I'd ever built getting on stage and competing at the highest level without ever overcomplicating this. And what it looked like for me was, you know, testing out different breakfasts. You know, I did the carrying over the meal from night, like having the meat and rice. And and then I'd have like meat, rice and eggs for breakfast. Then I had other mornings where I did like a, a big oatmeal breakfast. And then I had other mornings where I did like a sweet potato with something. And you know, and really what I was doing with that was less about like trying to break down the science of what's going on with cortisol and insulin and more like, how do I feel eating this way? And then my workout two hours later is, am I, is my performance in the gym feel amazing? And for me, it was oatmeal. Like uh, not, I felt the best on that. Now I didn't feel bad on those other things I just said. I definitely didn't feel good if I had something off like a cereal or like a, or a big old like steak breakfast at that time and eggs. Like I wanted some carbohydrates for sure. I noticed a big difference. In fact, I noticed when I had 
two carb meals before my workout, I had the but the best workouts, the best pumps, uh, the best lifting sessions. I felt the best when I got two meals in. Which so basically for me that was about eighty to ninety grams of carbohydrates before I would lift. So that's what it came down to me. And that was so individual. Like I would talk to all my competitive buddies and some of them lifted better on lower carbohydrates. Some of them needed even more carbohydrates than that. Some of them chose different carbohydrates. Like, so for me, I mean, what you're learning in NCI, I think is, is important. So you understand how the body works and responds to all these different foods. And so you have that foundation, but as far as applying that to yourself for maximal results to try and build as much muscle, get jacked, like it sounds like you're trying to do. Um, I'm really actually, I'm doing the field test. I'm playing with the amount of carbohydrates and what type of carbohydrates, and then how does my workout feel? And I'm doing that consistently for a while. So I have a, a time to measure it and go, okay, two weeks of eating oatmeal every single morning at this time, and then having this meal and then working out, this is how I felt. Okay. Now I'm going to switch it up. And I'm going to eat rice and this, and now I'm going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to do a higher carb and then I'm going to go low and then, and then basically deciding what that is for you. That gives you the best performance. That's my opinion on how I would approach what you're trying well, to do. Are you working out really early in the morning or is this late? Uh, enough? I probably have about an hour before I go lift. I've been uh, making eggs and hash browns, like four to six eggs and then hash browns before I go lift, let it settle a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, go and pump some iron. Well, okay. So for, for, I mean, and how do you feel an hour for a lot of people might be too short of a time window to eat. And then what, 30 minutes later you have your pre-workout and then you work out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's usually about 45 minutes to about an hour before that, that I eat. And then I'll take some pre go lift. And, uh, I guess it does kind of depend upon how big of a meal I ate for dinner the night prior as to like how much hash browns or how many eggs. I'm not necessarily tracking my calorie intake or my macros right now. It's kind of just been, uh, like the intuitive eating so, yeah. okay, well that, first of all, that will pay you way more dividends than trying to figure out what type of carbohydrate to intake. So knowing that is way more important. So that's another thing too, when we're talking about things, when we're talking about insulin and cortisol and things like that, we're also talking about priorities. And if I don't know, if I, you can't tell me if you were, if you, if I was coaching you and you couldn't tell me your carbohydrate intake and your macros on a regular basis, but then you wanted to ask me a question about what type of carbohydrate I take, I would push back on you and go like, you first give me that information so I can adjust your calories and your macros before we start getting into how, what specific carbohydrates to take at what time. And also just to try this, okay, if you, since you're working out so early and you have limited time, make a shake, put a half a cup to a cup of oats inside the shake with like bananas, strawberries, like and some berries and make like a protein shake for your meal and see how you feel. Do that for a couple workouts and get back to me with that, that loaded up of carbohydrates. So use dry oats inside the shake, use some berries that you like. So strawberries, blueberries, whatever, banana in there and your favorite protein shake and take that in. And that is, will digest, break down and, and get into your system faster than like uh, your hash brown and egg meal. Have, you, you, have you tried fat going into the workout fasted? Uh, yeah, I, usually if I'm uh, running out of time or I just get up quick and I got to get to the gym right away, I'll go fasted or I'll just eat uh, a little bit of fruit for the, the fast digesting carbs there. Have you noticed a difference between eating and fast and fasted for yourself? Is there a big difference? Uh, I guess if I eat like a larger breakfast before I go lift, I'll feel a little bit more, I guess, bogged down the, the fruit and less food before I go. That uh, tends to give me like a little bit, but it feels better when I work out, but I guess I don't have the endurance to lift as long. It seems. Yeah. So. Um, and it, something like that, then I would go with the lighter meal and then maybe drink some carbs during the workout for the sustained okay. energy. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do I, have a powder that I throw a scoop in with my protein post-workout. So. I, I mean, I want to get back. I want to get back to, to the, the priority list here. Cause I'm going to, you're not getting coached by anybody right now, right? You're just doing this on your own. Uh, no, I'm trying to uh, gain the knowledge to help coach myself and okay. then pass it. Pass okay. It on. So then this is important because you're going to get somebody in the, especially in the competing world, you actually sound like somebody who's like getting into the competing world, the way you're talking, because this is the type of stuff that all my competitor friends would talk about, like trying to maximize insulin levels for max. And I'm like, bro, if you're not tracking your calories and watching those things it, that 
that is so much more important. They get than, stuck in the wrong detail. They do. Or, like, or they're like timing their meal. Like, like you know, I'm gonna. they're making their shake in the locker room right after their lift because they're trying to hit that anabolic window. And it's like, dude, that is not that important if all the macros and calories aren't accounted for. That's so much more important. So I would be really challenging you in that of like, dude, be very consistent with tracking your macros and calories and don't try and... I mean... Remember that we we push intuitive eating on the show all the time because we're g- talking to generally people that just want to be healthy and fit. Like you, t- if you came to me and said, "Yo, Adam, let's get jacked. I want to put on as much muscle, get as strong as I possibly can, and as fast as I possibly can," I'm gonna go. Okay, we need to track. We're not eating intuitively. We are going to get this thing dialed, especially if you're talking about insulin and cortisol and you want to get that detail. It's like, we're going to start tracking and really paying attention because there is such an individual variance. I've seen all different types of foods affect all different clients differently. And sometimes the science lines up perfectly and it's like, oh, that makes sense why he feels better eating the carbs. And then sometimes it doesn't make sense. And so until you and I got dialed in enough to where we are tracking exactly how you feel and you reporting back to me, I'd want you focusing on those things first before I got into this stuff. That's just my opinion. Right. right. Yeah. I guess uh, after listening to the show for three years, I probably could have predicted to uh, hear the individual variants answer and, uh, you know, start with the basics before we start getting into the scientific stuff. So, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm, and, and, and seriously, bro, I, uh, I didn't even get this far into overthinking the process for myself at the highest level of building a body. It's uh and I and I would tease all my bodybuilder buddies that because it is what they like to talk about. All the science nerds like to get into how it all affects the body and the glycemic index, and they start and it's like, man, really, honestly, it's about being consistent, good ass programming, staying dialed in on the calories and macros, and most guys just don't have the fortitude to do that long enough and consistent enough to build these crazy physiques. That's really what it is. It takes serious. And honestly, the guys with the best physiques, a lot of times aren't even the smartest guys. They just, they have proven they have that discipline to stay consistent about stuff. So it's like, to me, it's first about building that consistency and discipline around tracking and paying attention to what you're intaking. And then we can start to get a little geeky about pulling and tweaking and like, and I've done all this stuff too, bro, where I've backloaded my carbs. I've front loaded my carbs. I've carb cycled. I've done a low carb. I mean, I've played and I've played high carb. I've done everything in the sun to get to the bottom of like how my body responds best. All those things. As I think that you should too, if you're asking questions, you want to know about that stuff. Just sip on aminos all day, bro. Stupid, <laughs> stupid. Don't do that. that. Oh, punch you. Chest press. Yeah. Like chest press. <laughs> I actually uh, I read a study recently that said that excessive amino intake uh, reduces the dopamine production in yep. the brain. Yep. Or you, or you guys told me that. I don't even remember. It was, it was that. Yeah, it's too, probably too us. many branching amino acids <laughs> cause depression. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that leads into my next question for you. And that's how do you guys avoid xenoestrogens? Because yep. uh, I know you've talked on the show plenty of times about the rapid decline in testosterone in today's day and age, which is pretty scary. So I'm just yeah. curious what your thoughts are on that. The biggest offenders, cause you'll find them almost everywhere, but the biggest mm-hmm. offenders are, um, plastic containers, plastic bottles in particular. So avoid those receipts from the grocery store, receipts from the grocery store. Those are those. So, you know, when you get the receipt and it's kind of waxy, it's actually stupid. Yeah. But there's a lot like we, there's oh, so, yeah, yeah. so many in that, that you're, that you touch with your hands and it goes in your skin, a lot of stuff. So receipts are really bad. Plastic bottles are really bad. And then, uh, antibacterial soaps and chemicals in detergents. Those are the main ones that I would look at. Um, now you can go down the list and you'll go crazy because they're everywhere in the modern world. <laughs> but if if you just focus right. on those right there, you'll you'll hit the biggest offenders. And I and I think- yeah, you guys scared me out of touching receipts anymore. I never I never touch them anymore. And I you know this was this is actually on my mind as I was you know rubbing my chemical deodorant on myself the other day and thinking about this exact. <laughs> thing right there's certain things in my life that i'm just i'm not willing to like break from it's like my old spice deodorant that i just won't go with the all natural you know deodorant you don't have to it's just some they're they're, they're, i mean look there are really good brands now that avoid the the biggest offenders when it comes to products and you can find them now there used to be a very small market before it used to be where if you wanted deodorant that was free this stuff you need to use the salt you know the the, the, look like a salt brick that you rub under your arms It doesn't do anything. Well, my, my point of bringing that up and saying that I, I, why I was having this conversation in my head with myself was that like, it's something that I hadn't changed. And it's like, for me, there's, there's a, there's a hierarchy of things that I need to improve in my life health wise. 
before I get radical about certain things that have been consistent in my life. And this and I and there's certain things that don't bother me to switch. I've switched out my laundry detergent. I've switched out my hand soap. I've switched out a lot of these things that's I I don't have this infinity to. Like it's not a big deal. I don't have a, a like if Katrina changed it from dial to whatever brand, I wouldn't care. I would those things I don't mind changing. There's certain things that I do mind changing, and I feel like there's other aspects of my life. You don't use oil of Olay anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Herbal essence, dude. I'm all fuck about off, that. Guy. <laughs> so I just uh, I mean I think again there's just I think there's a there's a, a priority list here of things when it comes. Yeah, that's to why health. I, I listed the biggest ones. It's yeah. a, it's a, those are the biggest ones. The, pla the pl just plastic sun, containers. Just get as much sun as you can. Yeah, dude. those are the biggest ones. You do that, and you, you'll yeah. take care of a lot of. Well, them. The, the Teflon pans are high too, right? That's another high one. Cooking yeah, but I don't know if that's a xenoestrogen. Uh, but um, you can get like uh, I don't know what they're called. They're pans, and they have a nonstick surface, but it's ceramic um, instead of the nonstick, you know, Teflon type of stuff. Which that shit gets off in your food and in your body quite easily. Um, so you can find pans and stuff to cook with that don't have uh, those chemicals as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I've switched to uh, like the metal blender bottles and the glass meal prep containers and that kind of stuff. Stop touching those waxy receipts. So I've been just, uh, I was just curious what it was that you guys might do. If you even actively think about the xenoestrogen thing yeah. throughout well, the day. So well, I'm honestly, avoid those. Bottle now. Yeah. 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 honestly, we're so manly. We need more xenoestrogen. <laughs> <laughs> I've been too it's a good Just, balance. Justin takes the receipts and just rubs them on his yeah, face. And uh, I made some out underwear out of them. So uh, <laughs> make sure, I, you know, keep really? check. I believe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, good yeah, stuff. Thank you guys so much for taking my questions. It's been awesome to be able to come onto the show. I've been thanks. listening to you guys for so long. So. Thanks, Cody. Thanks right for on, calling right, in. Right on, right Cody. On, dude. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Where you, we, why do you have affinity up there? I think you said Infinity. I have, no, I have an uh, infinity. No, affinity. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I heard like something different. Infinity. Huh? It sounds like you said infinity. Oh, really? Uh, but, no. you know. That's why you could, you could challenge me on the spelling on that one. I would have got that one. <laughs> 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 my, my lisp might have fucked it up, though. <laughs> <laughs> to infinity and beyond. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it really does highlight how people get stuck in the like the the details, nuanced that, things. Yeah, oh, don't totally. matter as much as the big ones. Well, you know? and that was like the like. Okay, so I mean, obviously his goal was to get jacked, right? I want to mm -hmm. build as much muscle and stuff like that. And then he's like, I intuitively eat, but then I want to know about backloading my carbohydrates for insulin and cortisol reasons. And I'm just like, okay, that's yeah. that's. Well, he probably just learned about that. You know what I mean? Through no, and that's totally what. Yeah. It, and then of course the xenoestrogens and stuff like that. I mean, these yeah. are these are these are all cool, interesting. But there's definitely a hierarchy of things. There's, so that there's people I'm close yeah. to in my life where they. You know, they, they're worried about all the EMFs and the Wi-Fi and the plastic and the chemicals. And it's like, they'll wear crystals and shit to block all the stuff. And they're overweight and they don't exercise. Yeah, they don't and they eat, exercise. Like, they eat garbage, you know, yeah. organic garbage, but it's still garbage. Well, and, and I'm like, bro, if you just worked out and or fixed they, your diet. Even that, like they're, maybe they're not overweight and they're, you know, they're lean or whatever, like but they don't even strength train. Yeah. It's like you use the benefits of strength training for you will far outweigh you know, not will, grabbing the receipt or drinking out of a Just pump. strength training will cut your cancer risk by that's what 25%. I'm, that's what I'm saying. There's nothing that does that as that's much as that. That's what I'm saying is yeah. that if you are dodging receipts and wearing crystals and you're fucking not, <laughs> and you're all that you smell like a hippie all the time. Can we but get then Mother Ayahuasca you're, but you don't, but you don't, exercise? you don't ever squat, deadlift, or lift weights over your head. Like you are missing, you're missing the boat here yeah, on like what makes a big you difference. You have, you health. have, I, I got a, I got a buddy who has literally a patch of grass that he puts under his bare feet when he's on his computer. So he can touch grass because of the, <laughs> so he's grounding. Yeah, dude. And I'm like, oh, I love it. While yeah. you eat your donut, it's, come on, it's man. It's fun to see what people get into. <laughs> you got to figure out the important uh, stuff first. Yeah. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.